we live? Are we live? Seems good. Are we live? Seems good. Welcome, Beldite. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. And thank you for the greetings. Uh, so here we are back with KSP. Um, except I remembered, like, probably 10 or 20 minutes after the end of the last stream. Uh, Ferrum Aerospace gives us some tools. And also... Uh, Ferrum Aerospace, well, it makes things uh, more than a bit more interesting because you can actually have different regimes of lift and drag at different speeds. I, I don't know to what extent um, Vanilla does this, but you can actually um, sweep the angle of attack. I haven't had time to fully analyze um, and learn how this graph works. Um, properly, but let's see, this angle of attack is going from 0 to 25 degrees, and I can't remember what the minus 1 through to 2 is here. Where is it? Oh, Mark 2? No? Is that it? 0 0.5, sweep AOA. No, no, it's something else. This is a higher speed over here. Uh, lower, upper. Negative 25 to 25. Yeah, there we go. So negative 25 degrees to 25 degrees. That's our angle of attack here. Um... And these graphs represent different lift over drag, uh... I forget what the C is in CD, but the red line is drag. As we go faster, we get more drag. Lift over drag, uh, we get by far the best ratio for lift at... What? Um, about point... Uh, mark point one, I guess? No? Wait, what? Uh, it's the angle. It's the angle that's different. Uh, so like 10 degrees? Surely less than that. Is this the aircraft which had more stable flight without wings? <laughs> M maybe? Yeah, so at about 5 degrees, uh, we get by far our highest ratio of lift to drag. Um... CD. I wish it would tell us what these things are. Um, I think if we go to the other screen, we can get some hints on that. Uh, but basically... Basically... Oh, is this just at a static speed? I think it is. Mark 0 0.1. It's probably going to change... No, it's not that different. Um, but yeah, it is entirely possible to create craft that have significantly different uh, lift regimes at different angle of attacks at different speeds, if I recall correctly. Uh, I think we want data plus stability delivery. So here we go. Can we calculate? Nice, nice. MW, change in pitch up angular acceleration with respect to Z. If I recall correctly, this is telling us that the the craft wants to pitch up passively, ever so slightly, uh, which is fine, um, as long as it's a small number. Uh, this is at Mach 0.35. I wish it would just give us meters per second instead. Um... But if we do the same thing at a lower speed, we get some different numbers. At half of Mark 1... Um, it doesn't seem to be changing all that much. Most of our numbers are in the green. Salvi the Fox, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Chitty Mali, welcome in also. Um, yeah, I was kind of rushing trying to catch up on some of this stuff before the stream, but I had some stuff on today. 
Um, but yeah, I, I wish it would tell us what these other figures were on the other screen. Flap setting up. Oh yeah, we can, uh, I don't think we've got any flaps set up, so this would probably change nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can, you can, you can have like flap settings, um, programmed in with Ferrum Aerospace, I think. I'm not really seeing how to do that right now. I also added a mod for procedural wings, so we can get rid of this nonsense. Um, but yeah, so I'm, so I'm half going in blind to this. I, I kind of vaguely remember what I used to do with these things. Um, but suffice to say, we should have slightly better information than just, oh, the center of lift is this far ahead or behind the center of mass. Um... So let's go from, like, negative 5 to 5 degrees. Bo Boca Chica Fella, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Can we go higher speed or something? Can I stretch this graph out? No? No, that would just be angle, but... What's num number of points? Oh, is it a more detailed graph if I do this? Takes longer to calculate? Probably. I can't even see the center of the, the drag. Oh, it's just, it's really quite low. Hmm, what if we go faster? Um, let's, let's say Mac 1. Mac 1. And we can see at 5 degrees, the drag is not entirely uh, irrelevant. CL, center of lift? I don't think it's center, it's something lift. This is lift, drag, lift over drag, and I don't know what M is. Um... Switch to mark sweep. Sweep mark. Ooh. Yeah, this is one of the graphs I kind of remember. So as we go faster, we get more... Uh, as we go faster, we get less lift from the same craft. Um, but we don't really need as much lift uh, the, the faster we're going, especially if we're pointing up a little bit. Um... That's lift, that's drag. Now, lift over drag in particular gets smaller. And I remember some oddly shaped craft in particular had peculiar behaviors at different speeds. Are those mods in the tags? Yes, Ferrum Aerospace and Kerbal Operating System. Those are the main ones. Um, I can't raise gear. That doesn't do anything. Find velocity indicator. Oh, no, that's the, like, vector indicator. Okay. Um, so data and derivatives. I was actually expecting something kind of obviously bad when I calculated this after loading up the craft that we were playing with last time. Uh, this is not great, but it, it's small enough that it shouldn't actually be a problem. I'm gonna play with the procedural wings, but first I wanna... wanna play around with this a little bit more. So what if I move the wings forward a bit? That gets worse, because the center of lift is further forward. Let's move them all back a little bit. And... We're not quite in the green. What 
we're very, very, very low on the red number over there. Where's our center of... It's so far behind the center of mass. Mm -hmm. So supposedly this should be a pretty big improvement? Judging by those numbers? Now, now it's green. Okay. But I would I would have thought having the center of lift that far behind the center of mash, math, math, mass, would want to push the nose down. Um, I mean, it does want to push, push the nose down, just a very small amount. But supposedly that's supposed to be more stable. Can I turn off the... Well, first of all... What happens when the fuel tanks are half empty? Calculate again. That's actually looking pretty good. What if they are empty? Why can't I click this? Calculate again. Okay, that looks pretty stable. But I imagine I'm going to have trouble getting the nose up with this. Can I move this forward without the snap to? Here we go. Just a little bit more. I want a really, really small green number here. That seems okay. Yeah, perfect. In theory. Let's have a look at the uh, static analysis. Sweep mark. It looks pretty similar to what we had before. How about angle of attack? Oh, I probably shouldn't have the thousand points to calculate. That's a little bit, a little bit uh, more than we need, I think. I'm more interested in when we pitch the nose up a little bit. Especially if the other side is just the mirror image of it. Uh, I can't remember what M is, but I think it going downward like that is actually a good thing. Let me, let me just check. I was just reading about this. Where was it? Yellow. The final line, the yellow line, is a measure of craft stability. The lower the line, the more will craft will want to return to a neutral state. Here it steadily goes down. Looks like the craft will automatically recover from an angle of attack induced stall of the wings and bring the nose back to what a prograde vector. It still didn't tell me the name of the variable, but apparently this is good but not great. If it was further down, it would be even better. But it does automatically want to return to a stable regime. Uh, lift over drag. We don't get much lift at first. Hmm. How fast is Mach 1? Like 300 something meters? I think 0.35 is usually about what we're looking for for takeoff. Okay, that's decent lift, actually. Uh, that actually looks really good. 0.5. Yeah, that, that's looking real good. And we're still gaining lift as we keep going faster. How fast do we have to go before we stop getting more lift? We never do, and drag never changes. That doesn't sound right. Oh, lift over drag. No? Hmm. But what about... What about, what about, what about... Okay, here's the thing. Uh, this isn't increasing speed, this is increasing angle. So we actually have, like, no lift 
when our angle is straight ahead. Uh, could I maybe change that a little bit? Like, maybe just angle the wings upward just a little bit? Or even just these two at the front? Mm, I kind of want to angle... No, no, no. Undo. I want to angle these ever so slightly upward. Wait, before I do that, I think I should attach wings to these pieces. Where's the one I was using? Here it is. Can I do that? Uh, maybe? Kind of? That looks a little sketch, but it is attached to the actual wing. Yeah, there we go. So now if I rotate this, it should rotate the whole thing. Perfect. Okay, we're going to angle it upward just a little bit. And then calculate again. And then we start with a bunch of lift. Cool, cool, cool. Um, that may be more than we needed to do there. Let's look at mark sweep. Yeah, drag goes up a little bit after, like, mark one. That's fine. And what about... Uh, stability derivatives? Oh, that looks perfect. Is this, a, is this all we had to do the whole time? Is just tilt the wings up slightly. Well, I did move them back a little bit as well, but, um... Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how that handles. I will be playing with, um... Uh, with the procedural wings, but for now I wanted to take the craft that didn't fly so well at the end of the last stream and just make the smallest adjustments to it that we could and get it working. Let's see how it goes. Never played KSP, watched a couple of different streamers play it. Last stream I watched was using KER? Kerbal Engineer, is it? Um, but I found it interesting and fairly enjoyable when wanting to be serious or devish, devilishly evil to your kerbals. Oh no. How many kerbals have you lost to... lost to in theory? Uh, yes. Yes indeed. Drag me over a lift and I'll probably get smaller. Right then. Let's see how this goes. So we should have lift just by facing forward and should hopefully uh, lift off the runway automatically this time. I can dream. And yet at the same time it'll be wanting to push down a little bit. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, no. What just blew up? Oh, no. Oh, no. So, as usual, we can't count on this thing to stay straight on the runway. We just have to... I need to be a bit more proactive about steering it, I think. These damn early game wheels are the worst. Okay. So the theory is we lift off without pulling up. Which it looks like we do, and then lose control. I don't know why it's so wobbly. Glacier Wolf, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, can I try... Placing these garbage wheels a bit better somehow. I need to snap them to... Uh, the wings are in the way. I'm, I've, I've put them here and then rotated them so that they actually face down properly before. And that seemed to just cause massive problems. 
I, I really want to place them up in here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be better. One hopes. And they are really far up. It's probably a bit much. Let's move them down a little bit. And I hope that's okay. Can I get away with moving them forward at all? Where's our center of lift? If it doesn't pull up too quickly, that should actually maybe be okay, we hope. Let's try it. Glacier Wolf, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is all KSP2 had a patch? Have you tried it again yet? I have not. Maybe this thing will taxi a little bit straighter this time. I'd rather not have to touch the controls before it's time to pull up. That is looking better, I think. Nope. Why does it... Why does it turn? It's a symmetrical plane. Also, I'm pulling up as hard as I can, and... Well, at least we're flying. I'm actually trying to pull up as hard as possible right now, though. Okay, I've let go, and it's slowly dipping down. Well, it's definitely more stable than last time. We don't have a whole lot of control authority, but... If we can get the wheels situation worked out, then we've actually got ourselves a plane. I, I am actually pitching as hard as I can here. It's, it's not great. How much can I get away with like this? Quite a lot it seems like. It does auto-correct itself. Um, question is how well. Well, this is incredibly easy to fly once it gets going. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of maneuverability. Just how quickly can I turn if I slow down? We're still at 250 meters per second, that's actually quite fast. I'm gonna drop this, drop the throttle until we start stalling a little bit. See how low we can go. Actually, we should be able to just calculate that. Let's see what happens. And then we'll go back to the hangar and confirm that we can actually just calculate that. I do recommend not having SAS on while you're, like, testing these things. Because you really want to, like... Oh, and also turn off the... Uh, what do you call it? Control? Yeah, turn off the reaction wheels, because they can be kind of a cheat. Um, like, maybe turn them on later, when you've got everything the way you want it. Yeah, I can't pull up at 180. Uh, maybe turn the re reaction wheels on later on, if you want to just use them to have a bit more... a bit more pull in whatever direction. 
but when you're designing and testing the plane, you want to have um, everything determined by actual aerodynamics. Um, but yeah, let's revert to the space plane hangar. So what did our data say about... what's this? Delta V tools? No. What did our data say about... I think it was... Stability derivative. What is this one? Run simulation. No, that's fine. Um, Transonic. Final wave drag is achieved by... Oh, this is for going super fast. Okay. Calculate stability derivatives. I think I want to try getting away with a small red number here, because I'd, I'd rather have it pull up automatically than the alternative. So I just need to move the center of lift a bit further forward. Um, I would also like... I'd like to know at what speed we don't have lift. Let's see. Side slip, roll your pitch rate, pitch control... Pitch control derivatives. What does that mean exactly? Change in z-direction acceleration with respect to pitch control input. Okay. Um, do we not see lift from this view? I'm sure there was somewhere where I could see exactly where it would stall. Like, let's say we're only going Mach 0.5. Down velocity, forward velocity, pitch rate. So this is all just stability stuff. Moment of inertia, point, products of inertia, level flight. Airspeed based on this Mach number and temperature. Oh, is 0.134 meters per second? Yes. So this is at 340 meters per second. Is Mark 1. In Kerbin atmosphere at ground level. Okay. Angle of attack required to achieve the necessary lift force. Oh. Is that... So if I go only 0.1? There we go. Angle of attack greater than 0 degrees. In other words, we have to be looking up to have any lift at this speed. At Mach 0.26... At only 68 meters per second, we're supposed to have lift. Wait. Angle of attack required... 10 degrees. 2 degrees. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, okay, okay. So how fast do we have to go... Like... 136 meters per second. 0.4 degrees angle of attack would give us lift. And at Mach 0.5? At 170 meters per second we should be lifting up automatically. So why aren't we doing that? Evil Plot, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You set trim angles, yes. Um, although this one's looking a bit different. Oh, here we go. Pitch percent, your percent, roll, AOA, rake rudder. I believe this is like, if you activate the air brakes, you can get some control surfaces to activate so you can have those act as the brakes instead and flap slash spoilers I thought there were multiple settings for these um 
Not sure. He can also make the wings uh, heavier but stronger. Hmm. I definitely want more control deflect. 40 is probably overkill, but then these are really small control surfaces relative to all of this wing surface. Um... What is STD control? Standard control? Are these just showing or hiding the settings? So I didn't actually change anything with flap slash spoiler, right? Active, inactive. I can't tell. Am I supposed to set like active and then no? I thought I was setting, was maybe going to set the angle of deflection for when it is a flap or spoiler. Hmm. Well, let's try increasing the control deflection from these ones. I also want to move the wings forward a little bit, if I can. Until... We get a small red number here. Point oh three four. That's a big red number, kind of. Point oh one one. Let's try that. So the idea is the craft will want to pitch up by itself, but slowly. See how that goes. Maybe I should try moving the uh, wheels again. Why can't I see the center of lift? There it is. Try that, I guess. Okay. Go. So I think we said it was like 100 and something meters per second that this should be generating lift. And it should be trying to pull up by itself as well. It doesn't seem to be doing either of those things. Okay, whoa, 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 that was violent. Okay, that didn't happen until I tried to pull up. So I definitely made the uh, elevators too aggressive. Let's try 20 for the deflect over here. But it did get all the way to the end of the runway without my touching anything. Um, I wonder if the fact that it's trying to pull up is why we're not dancing around on the runway with the wheels. Like, maybe because we're not, like, pushing down. I don't know, shouldn't it be the other way around? Like, if we have a slight downforce until we're ready to lift off, you'd think the wheels would be more stable? I haven't touched anything yet. It's doing a much better job of staying straight. Okay, one... I'm going to try pulling up slightly at 140 meters. It's not pulling up. Oh! Hey! An actual takeoff! I had to force it a bit. Well, I don't know if I had to force it a bit. It seemed like I did. It is very slowly dipping down, which is, uh, what I would have expected from that green number that I turned red, and yet here we are. This is so much better. Look at that. Uh, 
obviously if I pull it too hard. Oops. What just exploded? I... What did just explode? I honestly can't tell. <laughs> Alright, can I change this mid-flight? Yeah, let's try 10. Should be the same over here. And if I pull as hard as I can... We can't turn nearly as fast, but it's not overdoing it. Let's try... 12? That's more... close to what I'm looking for. 13? 14. Let's just keep going until it starts getting wobbly. 20 was not that far ahead of uh, what's stable here. Let's try 17.5. I'm going to stabilize and then pull as hard as I can. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. I'm really surprised how 20 was just barely too much. I even put it to 19 now. Yeah, 20 was literally just barely too much. If I slow down, I should get tighter turns. Is that going to make us unstable when I pull too hard on the pitch? Doesn't seem to. We're actually turning pretty slowly right now. Hmm. I wonder how I could have basically the same plane, but I could pitch harder. What? Okay. Why was 20 too much, but... This is as fast as I can pitch up at 19. I don't get it. Did I misread it? Was it on 40 before? Did I misremember? Yoink. Yeah, I can't actually pull this too fast right now. Huh, what's the difference? Maybe... Is there that much less atmosphere up here at only 1600 meters? That might actually have something to do with it. Alright, let's see if we can land. I think we're already too fast for this approach. I could try banking left and right to bleed a little speed off. It's not going to be enough. Not this time. If I activate SAS, will it stay level? Or do I have to babysit it the whole time? I have to babysit it. Alright. We're already down to 160. I don't get it. Why was I... Okay, that's too much. Let's not die. Maybe I started it at 40 and forgot or something. Let's try 25. That seems a bit more reasonable. Actually, that's turning really slow. Let's try a bit more. Alright, we might actually have an approach here now. I don't get it. I set the... Maybe I shouldn't... I need to check it at different speeds. Because according to FAR's calculations, I sh the plane should be trying to pitch up all the time. It's trying to pitch down instead. 
Okay, that was too much. I think we're good, actually. I think we are actually fine. And it's very, very difficult to not have it wobble like that. The nanosecond that I take my hand off the pitch. If I had analog input, that would have been doable. All right, let's see the stats. So, well, first of all, sweep AOA. Lift goes down after, oh, that's like many degrees. That makes sense, that's fine. Lift over drag sweet spot is like a few degrees pitched up. Yeah, this actually looks pretty good. But what about the stability derivatives? This negative this positive number right here, MW, indicates that the plane should be trying to pitch up a little bit of its own accord, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. Quite the opposite. Change in pitch up angular acceleration with respect to Z direction velocity should be negative. I've got the center of lift in front of the center of mass, so yes, it should be trying to force itself up. Uh, what about at different speeds? This is at 119 meters per second. This is at 170. 0 0.09. 0 0.35. So as we go faster, it's, try it's supposed to be trying to push itself up harder. And then when we go Mach 1, 340 meters per second, it's actually the other way around, it should be slightly pitching down. Forward velocity derivatives. Change in acceleration with respect to x direction velocity. I think that means that when we're going this fast, it's slowing us down. Like, we, we can't actually get that fast in this thing. Then again, I don't know if it takes thrust into account. Point one four. Hold up. Huh. It actually changes significantly once it hits Mach 1. Or very close to it. That's weird. So what about like 0 0.7? Hmm. I feel like I'm going to regret this, but we'll do it for science. I'm going to push the wings forward again. Uh, and that red number is going to get bigger. And we'll see what difference that makes. Again, it seems to be indicating that it should be trying to pull up, like, automatically, based on the aerodynamics. But that is not what we experienced. Let me check that page again. Uh, MW. MW is now red. The craft will now want to pitch up in normal flight. Okay. So why didn't it? Also, what was this set to? 20. That's actually pretty bog standard. At least it's going straight on the runway now. I'm going to see what happens if I don't touch anything. Oh, 
it pitches up. A little faster than I would like, but we can probably manage that. SAS is, oddly enough, not keeping it steady. Whoops. Uh, you're gonna go prograde there? No? Uh oh. Might have to try and force this one. Oh, I think we're just dead. Okay, I didn't think it would be this bad. Pull up. Nope. Alright then. Hmm. Let's tweak the wings again a little bit. Where's, where are the numbers? Stability derivatives. I want this, but smaller. Or maybe, well, what happens if I put it slightly green? Maybe I should tilt the wings up a little bit more. I want to aim for the smallest possible green number this time. Okay, negative 0.004 seems good. Let's see it at different speeds. 0 0.5... 0 0.7... 0 0.9... 1... 2... Yeah, that should be good. But does it have lift facing horizontal? Uh, sweep A away. It should do. Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4 doesn't really change all that much. The faster we go, the smaller an angle we've got to have good, uh, good control, basically. Hmm. So is this it? According to the math it is. I seem to have found a good, a good spot for the wheels. No touchy the controls. Is that wobbling? No. Oh, I still haven't touched. Okay, never mind. Uh, I think that is because the. Uh, I think it is because it's pushing the nose down that it ends up wobbling like that. What happens if I hold the the uh, the flaps up? the ailerons the entire time. I imagine it's going to pull up a bit too violently once it gets a bit of, uh, enough speed. But maybe it'll actually take off and not wobble the wheels left and right. Yeah. doesn't turn very fast. But it's not like we need it to. It's pretty 
be easy to control. Seems fairly forgiving. I bet I've got way too much wing for the maneuverability I have in mind. Can it land though? That's the real challenge. I just realized we've angled the, some of the jets upward as well. It's probably fine. Actually, no. The jets should probably face straight forward. Pull up, pull up. Uh-oh. Faster. Yeah, I think we should be able to land this thing. As long as it's not too wobbly when I activate or deactivate the... the control surfaces. The problem is I've got digital input and I'm having to pull up to keep it steady. Maybe I can use... slow inputs. Yeah, the nanosecond I let go it dips all the way down, is the thing, so I can't, like, I can't very safely bleed off a little bit of, holy crap, why the bounce? What are those wheels made of? Frickin' flubber landing gears. Okay, I might try angling the wings up a little bit more again. But these ones... I want straight horizontal. If possible. Let's see what that looks like. Lift question mark? Seems good. Super hello. Wel welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's see the derivatives. Yeah, that actually looks good. If we go too slow... What's this? M-O-E. Pitch control input should be positive. Change in pitch up angular velocity with respect to pitch input. Negative three, that's if we're only going 68. We can probably ignore that. We can go all the way down to 85. 74 even. Okay, yeah, we should still have control at like 71 meters per second.
We can try it. All right. Begin. So how many degrees have we tilted these wings up now? Like five or so? Maybe more like seven to ten? I know our engines aren't that powerful. Okay. Why? I would love to know I would love to know why symmetrical plane tilts to one side randomly as we speed up. Do I need to like push down to keep the wheels on the ground until we get more speed? Isn't landing it going to be impossible if this is what it takes to take off? Nope, it's drifting. Hmm. Why would that happen? Why would it act as if we're ruddering to one side? When we've made a symmetrical change. Your rate derivatives, these are all green. What, well, isn't that with respect to your right rate? I don't know. I really don't. I think I've had enough of this nonsense. Let's play around with the, uh... Procedural wings. Procedural nose cone. What? Made from viscoelectric nanopolymers. Which were discovered by accident growing in the back of the office mini fridge. This fuel tank can be stretched to accommodate fuel loads of a range of sizes and shapes. Where are the wings, though? Where are my procedural wings? Don't tell me I have to unlock them. Procedural battery. It's very untextured. Bruh. Do I not get wings yet? Aviation. How goes the KOS? Haven't really got to it, unfortunately. Dunbaratu? Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Aerodynamics. Procedural nose cone. 1.5 meters. Radial air intake. Do I have to go, like, all the way over here to get procedural wings? Really? Bruh. There it is. Procedural wing. Bruh. Not happy, Jan. Verify the left and right wing controls were set the same? They were. They were from a mirror. Uh, what? No. You know what? Let's, let's start over. Whoopsie. Let, let's start over. I definitely want a Mark 1 cockpit. Uh, we want... Ooh, procedural solid rocket booster. That's actually very interesting. You could tweak that to the point where a certain a solid rocket booster would get you to a certain height. Could it be the weight on the wheels? They can't take much. Yeah, the starting it, it's really annoying to me. The starting wheels are so bad. And this is like exactly when the player needs some leeway, when they're figuring things out for the first time. I 
When the shocks bottom out, they make a... They make a wheel get stuck and not roll right. Ravna. I don't think this is going to look very different from... The plane that I was just making, because... We've got so few options. Um... So few parts. The only engine we've got is this tiny little thing. Well, the only jet engine, anyway. Where was it? Juno basic jet engine. Fuel tanks. Tiny ones. Put them over here, this time. And we need an intake as well. I don't think they're under... Aerodynamics? They are. Yeah, put the intake right in front of the, uh, the door into the, into the airplane. That seems safe. Could I put... Perhaps some... I guess I could try doing the swept wings again. I don't think it's going to work out so well. A couple of tail fins back here. That'd give us a lot of control. Maybe too much. And... Deluxe for the tail fin. Maybe... That's too big. I'd like a small version of the winglet up the front. Maybe this. Let's see how our center of lift, etc. is looking. Well, I have to put the landing gear on first because oh you know what I bet I need to make sure that I put the landing gear centered on like the very bottom so if I start it here and then move that around if it needs to go forward and then this goes back here somewhere Probably a bit further down. Not... no, not like that. That might be okay. I don't like how far back this is sticking out. Let's put it... Uh, let's put it... Yeah, there we go. It should be touching that part. Not this part. That might be a bit too far back. This way we can move it around wherever we like. Okay. Center of lift is for some reason in the ground. Wait, what? No, we're good, I think. Let's see some calculations. That actually looks kind of neat. Alright, first thing I want to see is the stability derivatives. Looks good so far. Careful that the tail isn't directly in line with the exhaust of the jets. Putting an obstacle in that exhaust can make the game choose to null out the jet thrust. Oh yeah. Uh, I think it has to be pretty close, we'll see. Let's see this at different speeds. 0.2 is only 68 meters per second. That should be fine. It's a very small positive number anyway. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Uh, Mark 1. Mark 2. Mark 3. Did I just stumble upon a really, really good design just by slapping it together this time? 
what have we got? Uh, very positive lift after like at about one degree. No lift at zero degrees, so we need to pull it up deliberately. Pitch setting. Wait, what? Oh, so this is... wait. Is this pitching at one degree, or what? This... This display could do a much better job of explaining what it's telling us. Like, literally just... Did it just offset this? Is that all it is? Negative one to two. Nope. I, I don't know what that did. Spoilers retracted. I don't think we have any spoilers, do we? Let's see. Flap spoiler. Oh, here it is. Flap slash spoiler deflect. That's what I was looking for before. 15 degrees. So... Flap setting... Flap active, flap setting one, sweep, it changes, cool cool cool, flap setting two, takeoff, uh, that also changes the shape of it and we actually have lift at zero degrees. Oh, do we have lift at zero degrees? It's hard to read. Angle of attack is zero to 25. So this negative one to two is... Is what exactly? <laughs> Label your graphs. CL, CD, CM, LD. Divided by 10? The green is lift over drag. The, the cyan color is lift. Red is drag. I can't remember. Well, I even tried to look it up. It didn't explain very well what CM is. But apparently lower equals... It'll push itself back toward prograde. What if you put on some parachute on it to get it back on the ground? I'd prefer not to need it. It's always an option. Three, landing. Sweep AOA. Okay. Wouldn't this just, like, force the nose into the ground, though? Like, how does that... Negative 2.54... Zero. No flaps. It was 0 0.22. Apparently it doesn't make that much difference. I don't see why. I had no idea the game actually calculated 3D lift. Uh, not without a mod. I don't know how detailed the, the base game is with that. Well, we can try it. And what about... Spoiler. So flap and spoiler deflect are the same setting. I remember using like mirrored uh, hails as spoilers. That wasn't bad. It didn't affect your lift or anything. But I can't see myself using these as spoilers. I'm terrified of using them as flaps, but we'll try it. Control deflect 20 degrees. I have a feeling that's going to be too much. Let's see how it goes.
anyone know of any open source aeronautical engineering courses? Yeah, I don't think we're getting any thrust. Yup, buddy. Alright then, revert flight. Hopefully putting this somewhere else isn't going to mess up our craft all that much. Thrust above the center of mass might be a little bit bad, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see those numbers again. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks about the same. Sweep AOA. Uh, that looks about the same. Is that actually slightly negative? Alright, we'll give that a go. Normal game uses a pretty basic model. This is a mod called Firm Aerospace. Yes. I think the, uh, the normal game used to have a more basic model. As I recall. In particular, the atmosphere thickness near ground level was ridiculously high. Alright, I haven't touched the controls yet. It's looking good so far. We're almost fast enough to maybe take off, maybe? Let's try it a hundred, pulling up a little bit. Actually, first time I'll just not touch it, see what it does. Since we're not gonna... Probably not gonna crash into the side here. Just barely. It tilted down so hard. Uh, also, I forgot to try the flaps. Flaps. On. No, I don't think that did anything. Where's the flap button? How do I... How do I flaps? Ooh, I forgot about this. That could be helpful as well. Flight status nominal. AOA. Flight assistance toggles. Oh no, I don't want that. I want I want to build a plane that almost flies itself. Um Is it part of the vanilla game to turn flaps on and off? I don't think so. It'll be because the thrust is tilting it down. That could be it. That might be one thing Ferrum doesn't take into consideration. Hmm. What if I just put four of these <laughs> so that we could have them symmetrically around the uh, around the back of it? That is a lot of control authority. But it's not that big of a fraction of the wingspan, I guess? It's kind of big. Alright. Can I put these on the ends of the wings? Technically? I have a bad feeling about this. Um... Didn't make much difference to all of this. Why is that changing? Okay, let's give it a go. Launch. All that mass on the wingtips. Verzor? 
welcome in, hope you're doing well, good to see you again, super hello, welcome in, Stefan, welcome in also, I haven't touched the controls yet, so far so good, it seems a bit wobbly, well it got to the end of the runway with no input, and it tipped down ever so slightly, and correcting it didn't make it fall over immediately. I can bring the angle of attack significantly far away from center, and it doesn't flip out. Uh, I need to be pretty careful with the inputs. We can probably... To the surprise of no one, I should think. We can probably reduce the control deflect on these. Maybe I can... No, 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 don't flat spin. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop it, stop it. Oh no. I think we need more tail. It's a little bit too easy to have it side drift. You can tell by how high the angle of attack has to be for it to fly. That thing is super heavy. Is it? How heavy is it? Uh... We could just drain some fuel out of it. Why does it tell us the mass? I know I can see it if I save the craft. I would rather not have to go to there just for that. Contracts complete. Fantastic. Why does it say... Here we go, Kerbal Engineer. It is less than 8 tons. What if I drain, like, literally almost all the fuel? Oh, wow. Now it's less than 4 tons. How much does that change the center of mass? It doesn't look like it changes it very much at all. The engineer's report, orange gear, shows mass. Orange gear. Oh, is this part of vanilla? Whoops. This thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if, if you think it's so heavy, we can try giving it, like, half the fuel. Except for the little bit of fuel that's in here. Now it's, like, less than six. Is it possible in this mod to change the aerofoil profile? What do you mean by that? Also, can I get some more... I guess I could mirror this... over here. Is that a bit too close together to help... prevent... Uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Side drift. Side slip, that's what I was thinking of. The 2D cross section of the wings. Commented before you might be better off using structural fuselage instead of center fuel tanks. I could just have mostly empty center fuel tanks. I'd accomplish pretty much the same thing, right? Let's see how this goes. Actually, let me just run through the calcs first. Oh wow, even at point two it looks stable. We got nothing but green.
It might pitch down a little faster than I'm comfortable with, but it'll be flyable. Let's see the static. Um, lift go up, lift first drag, pretty typical, drag, drags itself up. It doesn't self-correct that hard, is the only thing. Let's see how this goes. There's a piece under structural that's the same shape but incapable of fuel, even less mass. Yeah, I figured it'd be less mass. There has to be an upside to it. Let's see how this goes. It will be flyable? Briefly? How dare you. I'm shaking and crying. Oh, I could have set these up as spoilers now that I've got two of them. Have them both, like, rudder in opposite directions for a net negative rudder that adds a bit of drag. Oh, net, net zero rudder, rather. I did have to correct it. It was drifting off to the left here. Well, we needed the end of the runway to take off, but otherwise it seems good so far. There's a lot of inertia with the way it rolls. Like, it rolls slowly at first and then fast and then it has to keep rolling. I wonder if that's because the... It's probably because the control surfaces are close to the middle. I need to change the limit on this. About... 13? Whoa! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I did deliberately pull it up fast. Um, to see if it would reach its limit or not. Like, to see if it would overcorrect and bounce like that but um i wasn't expecting the wings to just spontaneously combust i have to admit that was uh that was a little bit different um, <laughs> this thing is so hard to control <laughs> you can do it little remains of a plane water landing let's go it's only 170 meters per second it's probably fine Gently touch down. Well, that... That is a landing that you can walk away from. After th throwing up a few times and sitting down for a bit. Um, yeah, perfect. Perfect glider, indeed. Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so I want to change... What exactly? I wanted to see if I could make these wings stronger. Their mass is... A pretty small fraction of the plane. Let's double their strength. Uh, and I'll reduce our fuel in here as well. Again. Uh, 120, I guess. It should still be able to fly more than far enough for our little projects. And I want to set the defaults for the control surface down to like 10. Because this, this entire thing moves uh, when we use... In control inputs, so it's kind of a lot, actually. I want little baby versions of these for the front, but we don't have those parts right now. Oh, and this thing has fuel as well. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Let's see how this goes. What if you put a thruster center top? Mm. I put thrusters above earlier and 
it had a habit of pushing the nose into the ground. Is the only thing. It's a little unstable on the runway, but nothing that is difficult to control. Yeah, it, it, it wobbles left and right ever so slightly, but um, it doesn't actually cause any serious problems as long as you pay attention. This is actually looking much better. Maybe a little bit more violent with it. So far, so good. And I can't quite pitch so hard that it starts uh, bouncing back. Perfect. Let's see if I can... Uh, whoop. I was about to stress test it for stability, but that's not what I had in mind. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can side drift it too much. No? No, it seems pretty good. I think this is almost as good as we're going to get with such basic parts. I'm not sure why it has so much... Oh no, I already commented on that last time. The roll inertia. It's got a bit of the same problem as last time, where when I'm trying to slow down to approach the runway, I have to keep pitching up, but because it's digital input, the moment that I stop pitching up, it wants to dip down violently. But it's not as bad as last time. Oh, I guess that's what the flaps are for. And how do I activate flaps? Um... I don't do it from here, do I? No. Flap spoiler setting... Flap active? No, I'm pretty sure that just triggers whether or not it'll act as a flap when we, like, turn the flaps on. Uh, I can't remember how to activate flaps in Ferrum. The blue button, deflect more? Deflect more. Oh, are these the flap settings? Let's get some altitude before I try it. Also, I'll start using SAS. Oh, we don't have a pilot. Uh, <laughs> I can't use SAS. Okay. Gain some speed and altitude, so we can get away with this. Alright, so deflect more, deflect more, deflect more. Uh, yeah, it's kind of doing what I thought it would, pitching us down. I think what I need to do instead is change the flap setting to be negative. Let's try negative 15. If I can find it before we crash. Negative uh, 15.5, sure, whatever. So, deflect more. And that's pulling us up constantly. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit less, please. How about negative 12? still see the runway. Let's kill our speed a bit. Try to drift over there and lose some speed in the process. As is light indeed. I don't suppose you know a mod that would 
make this stuff visible on stream at night time. Tumbling, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One barrel roll coming right up. Radofins, like you said before, for the spoiler. Yeah, I should do that. Less violent changes for digital input. Caps lock for precision mode. I've got precision mode on. Yeah. But the thing is, like, even with precision mode, if I'm trying to maintain, like, this much pitch, and then I need to let go of it for a bit, it, it like, dips straight back down, if that's what the plane wants to do. To see at night, scroll down in the settings, ambient light boost. Oh, is that just in, uh, vanilla? Ambient light boost. Do I need to go back to the main menu for it, or no? Ambient light boost. Here we go. Let's try 100. Actually, let's try 10%. And not blind everyone, just in case. Oh, that's better. Now, usually with video compression, you want a lot more light, right? So you guys tell me how, how this looks. I'm going to try 50%. Comment about trim with alt. Oh, I remember. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Trim with alt plus S, alt plus W, and it will help you make smaller inputs. At the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sticks, right? It's it's adjustments to the pitch, whatever that stick. That's going to be very helpful, especially for landing. All right. Uh, so we've got negative twelve point five degrees from the flap. I, I'm going in way too fast. I think I'm going to have to turn around again. Looks nice. Fantastic. The trim will let you hold those partial deflections you've been trying to do with the flaps. Perfect. Perfect. And I think we're losing speed at just about the right rate as we turn around here. SAS overrides trim. Yeah, SAS is kind of terrible. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I like Herbal Operating System. You can make an autopilot that actually flies an aircraft smoothly. How much fuel do we have left? We started with the tanks half empty, right? So this isn't actually that bad. All right, we're down to 198 meters per second. Uh, it's, at the moment, it's kind of pushing up too violently with the flaps. But once I get close to stall speed, that would actually be good. I think we're still coming in too fast. Let's try and force a bit of a stall. No, 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 no. I wasn't brave enough with getting slow before I came back here. Alright. I think instead of bothering with all this deflect more, deflect less stuff, I'll just use trim, period. Uh, right after I avoid crashing into the water, that might be a good idea. There we go. Now we're getting some nice stable pitch. Is there a quick reset button for the pitch trim though? That's the, that's the one thing I remember bothering me about that. Alright, let's do a nice, gentle turn around. I think the caps lock also nerfs the pitch trim. Yeah, 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 I think it does. Which is fine, because I only want little tiny adjustments and I can just spam them. Because it sticks. Alt-X resets all trims to center. 
doesn't seem to work. Oh, there it goes. I think I have to hold it or something. Let's not crash. It's actually so much better for turning as well. Look at that, nice and smooth. Where's the runway? Waves, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's drop down the thrust even more. If we need this little thrust, is the plane really that heavy? Let's drop it down to zero. I want to be a bit over a hundred when I reach the runway. I don't think that's happening at this rate. I really need air brakes. Can I configure them from here? Flap slash spoiler. Spoiler, yes. So if I activate air brakes... I think I have to do something in the... Oh. I think I have to do something in the vehicle assembly bay to make this activate when we hit brake. And once again, I'm here with 200 meters per second. Still, uh, we're obviously approaching the runway with much more stability now. I think we can actually land today. That's the strength of my planes being very poorly designed. When I don't power them, at least they slow down real fast. That just means you have more drag. Maybe I should... No, it's fine. Yeah. Using trim with pitch is becoming my default way of flying. With roll and yaw, it's obviously fine to just tap it. Well, I, I, I almost never use yaw anyway. But... You want pitch to be nice and smooth and gradual. Oh, now I'm a bit slower than I realized. I forgot to check our stall speed. I think it's like 80 or something, though. Let's uh, add a little bit of thrust. I don't particularly want to drop below 100 while I'm turning around. Uh, actually, the prograde is looking a bit further below the nose than I realized. Yeah, there we go. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. Now I just need to find the runway again, since it's dropped below the hills. There it is. There it is. Engine off. I think we can probably glide from here. Probably. I'd rather approach too slow. We can always uh, thrust again. I think. I mean, these engines don't respond that quickly, but still, it's generally easier to speed up if the approach is bad than trying to slow down at the last minute. 115 meters per second. Our prograde is significantly below the nose. Altitude 80 meters. I may have accidentally trimmed to the right a little bit. 100 meters per second. Uh, I was too focused on correcting horizontal. It could have been... Uh, that could have been a landing. 
Okay. But we know how much engine to use to maintain a kind of slow speed. So it turns out we can almost stay in the air at like 75. Bit more thrust, please. Let's try and learn to cruise in at like 90. And this time, nice and straight from far away. Yeah, I think I do need to reset the... Is it Alt-X? Yeah, it is. And then pull up, please. Is there a way to reset just the roll or your trim? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try again. Sadly, no, just one reset. Yeah, I, re I need to be really careful not to, like, accidentally trim the yaw or something. That does not help matters. Okay, can I be a bit greedier with the turn speed? Yes. Especially if we want to lose a little bit more speed. I think I want, um, oof, there we go. Not caps lock mode, but yes to using trim. So I can trim a bit faster. Engine off. Not, I'm not slowing down fast enough. Well, maybe. We are stalling a bit. I've lost too much run. <laughs> no! Of course, if I pitch down, I'm going to gain too much speed. No, oh, we're actually slowing down. Okay, okay, that's... Not what I was expecting. Oh, no. I thought if I went down at that speed, I'd gain like 10 meters per second. Uh, but this seems doable. Let's add the air brakes. Flap slash spoiler deflect is yes. And spoiler active. That should be it. It seems like I would have been able to do that from the... from in-flight, but it... maybe I missed something. Let's try it. Brakes? They're both going the same direction. Okay. These are a mirrored item, though. How do I... I can't change them individually as long as they're like that. And I think... Flap spoiler is yes. And that should be symmetrical, and I can just roll them up like that, maybe? Brakes. Did I not activate these? Flap spoiler. It's not working. 
Oh, spoiler, yes. Spoiler, yes. Why is it like this? What if I make them not quite perfectly vertical? Spoiler active 85. Spoiler active 85. What's this? Change name tag. That's for KOS. Dynamic deflection. Ooh. Start, start speed 200. Reduction exponent 2. Minimal control. That sounds very hard to figure out what it actually means. But it sounds like you can have it act like a flap at different angles at different speeds, which would be amazing. Toggle a dynamic deflection. Or toggle dynamic deflection. Hmm. Well, let's try this first. Invert one of the two. Yeah, the, the, the only thing is I want them to be perfectly symmetrical. Uh, let's see. Flap spoiler, active. There we go. All I had to do was put them at an angle so that they get treated the same way as wings. Uh, that's not a whole lot, but it's not nothing. We'll be able to slow down slightly faster with that. I could probably give it, like, these things for a really aggressive air break if I really wanted to. Um, but let's try this. Our goal is simply to fly out to the island and come back and land. up a little bit. Don't crash into the side thing, please. We good? Fantastic. I'm just going to fly out to the island because it seems like a good place to turn around from. Try and line up a uh, landing. I'm pretty sure it is possible to make planes in firm aerospace that will just settle into a regime of more or less maintaining altitude, like maybe climbing slowly, where you literally don't have to touch the controls. But this is a decent start. Oh, actually, let's see how much our air brake works at full throttle. I'm going to stabilize so that we're pretty much maintaining altitude. And 355. We haven't reached our top speed yet. This thing's a bit faster than I would have expected. Okay, well, anyway, our speed is still climbing. Let's hit the brakes. That's actually a lot stronger than I thought it was. And it has the effect of pulling us up slightly, which might actually be kind of good when we're trying to land. Or when we're trying to turn. Neat. Hadn't even intended that. You are entering Hansen's hindsight. Uh, what were, what were we supposed to do here? I think we need a 
Okay, I, I didn't plan for this. Um, map. Hansen's hindsight. We need to be above 19.1k. I don't know if this plane can do that. Uh, what's the job though? Hansen's. Crew report. And the other one is pressure. Okay. 19,100 meters. I seriously doubt that our little Juno jets can get us up that high. Uh, our, our mission for this flight has not changed. Let's see if we can land now. It should be a lot easier to get our speed where we want it now that the air brake actually it is surprisingly stronger than I was expecting. Above X altitude contracts don't really work with the starting Juno engines, nor with the next engine in the tree. The Weasley. Either one works at those altitudes, yeah. I seem to remember before the Weasley even existed, using the standard jet engine to like... Like, I would have to get up to speed below... like a kilometer or two below max altitude, and then pull up and just fling myself into the upper atmosphere um, to do it without a rocket assist. You end up having to have panthers before you can fly jets that high. I don't remember what a panther is. The first ones that have dual mode with wet mode afterburners. Oh, nice. All right. Brakes? Yeah, the only trouble with the brakes is they are a bit aggressive with pulling us up. I don't want to adjust the trim to compensate for the brakes. We obviously need to turn those on and off relatively quickly, potentially. Uh, I think we're losing speed fast enough. Yeah, we're probably fine, actually. How slow should I be before I stop braking? Maybe 100. Nope, nope, further to the right, please. This is really difficult with just where my fingers fit for this. We're not getting slower than 104 with the brakes on. Here we go. Alright, time to settle into... No, 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 this is what I was afraid of. No, up, 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 up. Okay. Okay, okay. So it takes too long to adjust the pitch with the trim, right when I need to maintain a very specific pitch after braking, is the thing. Holy crap. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, the pitch control. Like, the plane should be able to do this, but... The ways that we have to control pitch are a big pain in the butt. I, I honestly kind of need uh, analog input. One problem with spoilers is that pitch, uh, pitch you up like this, is that you end up getting pitch up when you hit the wheel brakes to stop on landing. Hmm. Maybe I should make them technically flaps. And activate them that way. So these will not be flaps. Or I could just make it less aggressive, but then we wouldn't be able to slow down as much. We were barely able to slow down enough as it was. Hmm. 
No, it's just going to make it slightly harder to control. Also, I should make the roll uh, gentler with these control surfaces. Let's go... I don't want any your control from these two. Not that I was touching your, but that would not be helpful. Roll percent will make it like 20. And pitch... Pitch is 100%. If I'd reached the low speed that I wanted to a bit before getting to the runway, I wouldn't have had to, like, take off the air brakes and then rapidly correct the pitch as much. Alternatively, if we had a way to air brake that was pitch neutral, that would be better. But how would I even go about that with so few parts, etc.? Mm. I usually find it's worth it to actually have separated aile ailerons and elevators instead of elevons. Seems to make control better, yeah. Like, uh... I think if we had... Is there not a smaller one of these? No. I think if we had the roll control way out here... I thought we had a smaller Elevon. If roll control was way out here in any case, and none of it came from here, uh, I think it would be a lot less inertia-y. It's like slow to accelerate and then it overshoots. I'm not that worried about the roll, though. Hmm. Maybe I should put tail fins up here. Okay, I have... I have an idea. It's kind of silly. But what if... That's not horizontal... Uh, that's not symmetrical, is it? If these were symmetrical... We could have them act as spoilers... And it actually would be pitch neutral. It looks very silly. And I think we should still have a tail fin. Um, we don't need a lot of, like, rudder control, though. So, spoiler. How much? Spoiler active. Oh, I can't see it. Is, can I, can I like, toggle the brakes in the vehicle bay? Using the settings to make them dedicated, uh, one does only one roll. Yeah, 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 I get you. No, I did understand that. I just wish I had the smaller elevons, because putting these here, it's going to be a little bit excessive, I feel like, for the roll. Also, are we over our part count? 24. No, we're fine. This looks very silly. But I think this is the way to make it work. Standard control. No roll, please. Uh, no yaw. Only pitch. And... Brake slash rudder percent. Brake rudder. What? What is brake rudder? Flaps. 
flap slash spoiler. I feel like 85 is going to be way too much. But I can't, like, see what it's actually going to look like from here. Okay, well, let's try the same settings over here as well. Um, no roll, only pitch, control deflect, 10, spoiler, yes, all of the spoiler deflect, which is probably going to be too much, control deflect, 10, We've got twice as many control surfaces here, and this one? Um, no your pitch and roll seems okay. Maybe not much of a deflect from this one. And no flaps or spoilers. Let's see how that looks. Let's check the stats first. Oops. Everything in the green. Fantastic. Sweep AOA. Snake, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. You can activate the points of balance, the three icons near the price ship. Uh, yes, I know. Yes. Help you a lot when you start. Yeah, this is a bit more advanced than that. Um, I know the center of lift should usually be behind the center of mass. Um... That actually looks pretty good. It actually looks very good. Let's try it. Alright. Brakes? <laughs> what? What happened to these ones? Yeah, that might be a little bit excessive. What do you, what do you guys think? Alright, um, but first, I must have missed a button here, like, spoiler active, there we go. Holy crap. Why is it going in the same direction? Alright, I think what I want is... This one's in the correct direction, it's obviously way too much, let's set that to like 5. See what it looks like. A little bit more than that, maybe 10. And this one, negative 10. Uh, yeah, negative 10. Yeah, that's about what I'm looking for. Just add a bunch of drag, and it should be pitch neutral. Uh, so let's get back to the vehicle play. play. Lacta de Bleakle Blay, who reset that. Uh, so this one will be negative 10. If the mouse will ever find negative 10, that would be amazing. No, I guess that's too much to ask. It'd be a shame if we were able to type that in. Uh... Spoiler active. And this one. Positive? Wait. Oh, this is the wrong setting. No. Back to one where you belong. Flap spoiler, spoiler active, positive 10.5. There we go. Click the hashtag. The hashtag. Oh! There we go. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Let's try that. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, let's see how it actually flies.
it wants to turn right quite a bit for some reason on the runway. Not sure why that would be. It's very concerning. Is the rudder not centered? Well, it seems to handle about the same way it did before, other than that. Which, I should certainly hope so. It means number mode, and you can type things instead of slide them. Yes. Very good, thank you. Alright, let's get to cruising speed. See how quickly we can bleed off speed with the air brake. I think we need to drop down our control deflect for roll a little bit. About 30. Yeah, that's better. Much better. Alright, that's fairly steady. 300 meters per second, and break. We're losing like a meter per second per second. Oh, that's with the jet engine at full speed. Let's turn the engine off. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Alright, now let's turn around. Probably don't need to thrust, actually. Definitely don't need to thrust. Could probably glide all the way home from here. and steady. This is going to be much easier. Might even land it this time. It's only going to get easier as we go, as we've got more parts to play with. We're pitching down, but we're still managing to lose speed. Let's maintain like 500 meters of altitude, I think. Actually, how high above is, how, how high above sea level is the runway? It couldn't be 50 meters, right? Need to break more, I think. I should probably rebind the brake button if possible. It's really difficult to 
to hold this and fly at the same time. I need to adjust my pitch trim. There we go. I have to keep, like, alternating between one control and the other. It's very, very unhelpful. These controls were not designed for human hands. Well, we lost our uh, landing gear and nothing else. And there goes the rest of it. Can I change... let me save this. Can I change the keys? Because that is atrocious. Having, having to switch between holding brake or correcting the craft's pitch, yaw, etc. Uh, not the best. A little bit of a landing, indeed. You treat Cottontail. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I really hate having to come back to the main menu to change some of these uh, inputs. Is there a toggle break? There should be. Oh, you can do it by clicking the button, right? That's not ideal, but it would have been better than, uh, than what we had. I, I don't see... Flight vessel? Here we go, landing gear, brakes. Can we toggle the brakes? Why is lights U of all things? What does L do? Translate right. Oh, this is for the docking. I think I'd rather bind that to like numpad keys, but then what are num pad numpad keys being used for? L is part of IJKL. Yeah, it is. Well, that's not the point right now. Is there a toggle brakes? I think we have to click the button. Um... But also, I could probably find a better key for this. Z, X, R, is E and Q in use? Roll left, roll right, of course. Maybe I could use a mouse button. Mouse three. That might not be so bad. So I can press mouse three um, and hold it to break, and or we can use the the clicky button to toggle it. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a bit better. Also, I can just click it here if I want to toggle it. What if I toggle it and then use the button? No, it just goes straight back to press to hold, which is actually kind of good. I think.
Alrighty. Now, I would love to know why this craft... Or at least last time I took it off, it really wanted to turn to the right on the runway. This time it doesn't seem as severe. go. I said up we go. Fantastic. Also looks like runway is 70 meters up. Ah, good point. Thank you. Yeah, I can even move the camera around while I'm braking with the mouse. That's going to be a lot better. Alright, let's head towards the island. Maybe I should go... This is above 18.2k, never mind. Give myself an incentive to pull off the landing. Alright, how far are we? That's probably far enough. Let's start turning. Breaking. Oh yeah, I don't I don't have to hold B, I forgot. Let's do it this way easily just tap the mouse 3 to turn it off. Is it bad to be holding brakes when we touch down? Probably. For the wheels. Oh, and does this thing have brakes enabled? No, it doesn't. Probably for the best. Probably shouldn't have steering enabled on it either. Well, it seemed to work okay getting off the runway. Let's give ourselves more time to line it up properly. Fifty. This is going a lot more smoothly. Literally just not having to hold B is a pretty big deal. Should just switch to ground level altitude instead of sea level? Uh... Oh. I thought it did... yeah. I don't think it had that option back when I played before. Nice. Although, at the moment, it's going to give a sea level regardless. Alright, our jet engine is at zero, our brakes are on, we're still at 140 meters per second. 135... 130, this might actually be good. Hundred and twenty two. I still think we're not losing speed fast enough. Oh, I'm not pitching high enough. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. 
And I need to stall, please. Even with this, the brakes aren't enough. I was braking from like two kilometers out. Oh my god, I clicked on something else. Stall. We're so drifting sideways as well. Okay, let's try again. If we can. There we go. Uh, nope, never mind. I thought I was getting up. I wasn't actually getting up. So I need to be down to like 90 or 80 before I reach the runway. That's tough. Wiggle to lose speed? Yeah. But this thing... I need to be really careful on final approach when I go left-right, because it starts side-slipping. Like, it doesn't get to the point where it's going to crash because it side-slipped. It, it bounces back, but the trouble is we really don't need the wheels sideways when we're trying to land. Oh, you can start from the island airfield. Since when? That's actually awesome. Now, will it actually take off from the island airfield? That is a question. Um, I guess we have more room if we go that way. Or I could taxi all the way to the end before we try to take off. Also, is the island airfield going to be all bumpy? That's actually terrifying. Put an aileron in the middle of the fuel fuselage to act as air brake? In the middle. Hold on. Okay, we're going way faster than I realized. Slow down. There we go. There we go, perfect. Gonna have to watch out for that bit of green over there. Alright, let's go. I think I can just turn to the right after going past the grass here. Probably. This is surprisingly okay. I think we'll take off just fine. Cool, cool, cool. I'm having to pitch up an awful lot because we're not going as fast. slow cruising speed of like a hundred. Do the settings adjustments hold over between flights? The ones that I do in the vehicle bay, yes. The last one you adjusted something to do with roll that helped with this slippage. Was that helping with the slippage or was it just... Um, I, I think that was just the fact that roll has a lot of inertia. Like, it keeps rolling for a bit after I let go. That wasn't really the side slip issue. If the adjustments are done in flight, they... yeah, 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 exactly. So I actually want to go slow enough that I have to pitch up that prograde's going to be below the nose, uh, but I obviously want to be able to stay in the air until we get there, so I might need a bit more thrust than zero. Just a, just a wee tad. Seems to be stabilizing towards like a hundred. Definitely don't want to 
turn that fast yet. I gotta suppress that instinct to turn towards the runway all the time. If anything, we need to turn away from it so that we can line it up better in the near future. off. There we go. I may be losing speed a little bit too quickly. Then again, that's the opposite problem from what I've had over and over again. Okay, I think I should give it a little bit of thrust. Maintaining 88-ish. Well, I mean, we're slowly losing altitude, but that's actually ideal right now. I need to be much, much slower with the turns. That's why we're getting this, this drift issue when we go this slow. Maybe I could correct it with the rudder. Yeah. Okay, this might actually be it. Pull up faster, please. Pull up faster, please. Please pull up faster. And please stabilize. Oh my god. Please stop going left and right. Why are you like this? Okay. Why is it when it's slow, it sideslips so much? But not otherwise. There's a physics reason, but it's hard to explain. Well, what do I do about it? A bigger rudder would theoretically do a lot more against the side slips. Alternatively, I could... That looks pretty pink. <laughs> oh god. Do we have a smaller one that would fit on top of this nicely? Sort of. That's too small. Well, I guess a couple of these on the edges wouldn't hurt. It reminds me of Babylon 5. Can you slide the rudder back further? That's probably a good point as well. A bigger rudder wouldn't be a bad idea either. Lamau. Yeah, that's a bit much. How about... One of these, but as far back as we can get it. That looks really dumb. Let's see the stats. Everything in the green. It's good on paper.
I think the exact same landing, but if I had it completely lined up from a kilometer away, it would probably work. Oops. Actually meant to take off from the other runway. Looking at the ship, you know, as thinking of... What? 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 Looking at the ship I was thinking of? It should not have. Okay. Why is this thing turned, like, seven degrees to the left when I haven't touched anything yet? Bad. Bad airplane. I think it's the weight on the edge of the wings that makes it wobble so. And that probably contributes to the side slip when we're going slow. When whenever we try to make a little left right adjustment. enough. Just put the engines under the wings. That's what I did at first and it had problems. Now that you split the tail into an X, you might fit the engines in there. That's a good point. I can't... Well, the engines are a bit bigger than this. Oh, why is it so high? But the, these things are here because we need an air brake. That's, that's why. Put more center mass on it so it has more downward force? What do you mean? It's already got downward force. I have to pitch up all the time. Alright. That might be far enough. Especially if we can kill our velocity nice and quick. What's this light for? Oh, I think it's a warning that you're going to hit the ground eventually. speed. It almost looked like you were bouncing on the wheels, so I thought Cinemass might help. As in more mass in the center? Or do you mean the center of mass, like where the center of mass is? Okay, we're down to 130 already. We've got a lot of height, though. Use fine control. And I want to come in with as little turning left and right as physically possible. the roll ever so slowly. Please slow down. Please slow down. 
How is this not enough air break? Do I need a sail? Is that how it's going to be? I think the answer is yes. Still 140 meters per second. Really? Maybe I'll just try and land on the grass. find a stable regime with thrust with the with the brakes on at low altitude so that we can just leave it at the last minute to land bar tends to make planes really have a lot less drag than in stock yeah a lot less drag <laughs> Threw some parachutes in. I think they might be a bit too violent. In stock, just stopping the engine is enough to slow down. In fire, you tend to glide really, really well, so you kind of need the flaps, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what these are. They're, they're already... tilted several degrees... to catch a bunch of air. Now we're up to 120. I think I want to reduce the thrust a little bit more. Even though we're turning. I remember the air brake, like the stock part, just violently slowing the plane down. Improbably effective air brakes. Okay, we're at 140. Should I kill the engines here already, even though we're turning? Give it just a little bit of thrust. I should have checked the stall speed. So far, so good. 98, 97, 96. 95. I can't decide if we're too slow or too fast. We're settling at 95 with this much thrust. That might actually be perfect. Kill thrust. We've still got our air brakes on. They've just been on this entire time. Looks good. Looks good. Oh, that was terrifying. But we actually landed. 
it can be done. Uh, are we going to run out of runway? We've had the brakes on the entire time. 33 meters per second? 26? 20? Oh my god, no. Not like this. Not like this. Stop. No. No. Why? Why are the brakes so weak? How are the brakes so weak? Maybe I should get Drew's shoots for when we touch down. <laughs> Morpheus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Vlad, welcome in also. Increase the spring strength. Spring strength. Oh, brakes are set to 50% by default. Well, that probably didn't help. Um, yeah, that, that probably didn't help, actually. Cessna brakes on a jet fighter? These are the only ones we have. Okay. Unless unless it, we're going to try to land with uh, micro landing struts. I'm, I'm sure it would be entertaining, but probably not effective. Glacier Wolf, Vlad. Morpheus, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Be good to see you again. If you don't have the advanced tweakables option turned on in the main options, you're missing a few of the things you need for planes. F -f -la -la -la. F -f -s. OMG, LOL, etc. Let's try 100% brakes and see if that doesn't immediately spin out the plane as soon as it touches down. About 75%. I'll save that for the moment. I really am not impressed with having to go back to the main menu for certain settings. Especially things that obviously shouldn't need, like the engine to restart or something, like changing control buttons. I think it was stupid that Squad decided to hide that functionality from players. There's no reason to, and it's not discoverable through gameplay, and no one tells you. Yeah, so where is it? What was it called again? Advanced Tweakables? Is it just a radio button that's not switched on, or what? Advanced tweakables on the general screen. Uh, can I search? No. Oh, here it is. In the in the middle of all these sliders, as opposed to radio buttons. I, it doesn't even tell you what this means. Uh, I'm not loving the camera wobble. Let's maybe turn that off. Because if it's wobbling, I want it to mean that the plane is wobbling. Near the sliders. Yeah, hidden in the sliders. Let's resume... AOS. Okay. Actually, I did just save it, didn't I? How do I select the... I saw the option to select a different... Oh, here it is. Island Runway. Go, go, go. 
Should have called out what it was. It turns on a few more adjustment sliders in some of the parts. I really wish they'd included wheels that aren't complete garbage at the start of the game, though, as well. I know I'm far from the only person who's had plenty of misfortune uh, from those crappy, crappy landing gears. There's a few tricks to placing the landing gear, but these ones are even more sensitive than normal to those invisible mistakes. Oh, break, 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 break. Break. And then? Let's get on the left side so we can have a nice straight run through. Away we go. So there's a new button now that says Spring Strength Auto on the landing gear. Check clicking that lets you adjust it. Yeah, I do remember seeing Spring Strength before. Let me pitch up, please. You know, it'd be nice if the moment that I start doing trim adjustment. Uh, it would just start from where the current pitch is. That would be very, very helpful. Alright, we need to turn way to the right. So that we can line up the runway properly. Uh, let's not throttle all the way up this time, to begin with. There's also a dampener button too, usually a good idea uh, to up it a bit to increase the spring strength. Yeah, um, I don't know if there's any option for, th oh, spring dampener auto. I find it odd that these fixed landing gear have these options, but I guess inside this thing? Remove from symmetry. That's probably what I was looking for when I was trying to adjust the, uh, the tails that I was using as brakes. Instead of forcing them to be slightly not vertical so that they would be symmetrical like wings. Uh, probably if I could have said remove from symmetry, I could have adjusted the two of them separately. When you took it off auto, a new slider appeared up above. Yeah, I saw. I'm just going to leave it on auto for now. We're going to try 75% brakes and see how that goes. And I'm going to reduce our thrust to the bare minimum to stay afloat. Let's kill our thrust for a moment. We need to lose another 100 meters per second before we get there, and at this rate, I don't know. Really don't. My kingdom for those jet engines that you can uh, reverse the direction on. Those are amazing. We might be losing speed fast enough this time. We are nice and steady. Up. Oh. 
up, 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 up. And direction. No, we're not going to slow down in time. I'm kind of curious to see how much we slow down. I probably shouldn't even be trying it at 100 meters per second, though. Alright, speed up. Speed up. I said speed up. Uh-oh. That was kind of close. And stop speeding up. Release brakes? I don't actually really want to right now. I want to find exactly how much rust I need to maintain like 90 meters per second. But yeah, I might need them to not die right now. The engines, that is. This right here, um, this side slip, that's what makes it so dangerous to adjust left right in this plane when we're trying to land. Okay, we might have gained a bit too much altitude. Let's trigger the brakes again. And pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh. Now the pitch is... Ah, oh, God. I need trim that can be adjusted faster. There's nothing between adjusting trim and using the, like, the fine controls, which is too fast. Why are we rolling left? Oh, for fuck's sake. Try again. I wasn't patient enough, and now we have to take five more minutes just to make an attempt. But yeah, there's so many, there's so many moments where the amount of pitch that I need to maintain goes from like here to here or here to here or something. And there's literally no way to do it without like the pitch jumping back down to neutral. At least not quickly. Actually, that... There we go. As you slow down, the controls become less good at keeping you straight. Yeah. Pale surfaces would be more effective at being... good weather vanes if you slid them further back. I can't really go further back than this. can I be with this turn? Freaks. Oh, not free camera. Uh, and this is exactly one of those moments where I can't adjust the pitch fast enough without overcorrecting it. That's way too fast. Let's do a circle from here. Why not? 
The vertical fin could be safely slid back. Yeah, but it's going to look ridiculous. So it hangs off the back without it really hitting anything. Yeah. Why is this one so much more angled than this one, I wonder? Oh, is it because I have the brakes on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually makes perfect sense. Alright. Engine off. Uh, auto camera, please. Maybe I should use chase, uh, free cam. No. I was thinking of chase cam. This is probably fine though, actually. Now I really need to stabilize horizontally. Speed's good. I need to learn to use the rudder instead of rolling make these little adjustments. Not used to it. Please go right. Why why am I ruddering so hard to the right and nothing's happening? Okay. Okay, okay, this is bad. This is very bad. I stand corrected, ruddering is bad. I think, uh, I think it only really accomplishes anything if you've got thrust behind you. All it managed to do is, like, point the plane's nose to the right and not change the vector in any noticeable amount. I am, so I really should be in bed. Fair enough. Take care. Dunbaratu. Thanks for hanging out. You'd think if we stall at 90, then we wouldn't have to go 130 to get off the runway. No, I'm actually not able to pull up off the runway at all. I have to fling myself off a cliff. I still can't seem to solve that problem. At least, not without putting the wheels in such a place where the moment that we do lift off, we would hit our butt into the runway. Well, at least we're taking for granted that the problems of last week are solved. Going straight enough on the runway, not bouncing all over the place, being able to take off, stable flight. The only thing we've got left is the problem of landing. And it's a doozy. Maybe I should just set roll input to way less sensitive. And make it a lot easier to make small adjustments. I think I'll do another turn to slow down.
Yeah, that's looking better. Alright, so I want to find exactly the amount of thrust to use to maintain like 95 meters per second or something. Just enough for a very slow, very controlled approach with the brakes on and then we just let go of the thrust at the last minute. And basically just drop onto the runway the moment we do that. Future planes are going to be a lot easier to fly. This is honestly as hard as it's ever going to get. It's going to be a lot easier to design them as well. Not just because we got better at it, but because we've got parts. where we have to pitch up ahead of time, otherwise we end up almost crashing. You've got to be kidding me. What? That was like the perfect landing, or it should have been. Why did it explode? Another happy landing? I don't understand. That was like the slowest, cleanest touchdown we've ever done, and it all just exploded in record time. What was even wrong with that landing? I'd love to see a replay. <laughs> Fixed landing gear crashed into runway. Aha. Uh -huh. At 70 meters per second. At the perfect angle. Too much vertical speed? More than 5 a second and something's bound to explode. We were barely dropping. It's ridiculous. Eagle Wolf, Dehos, Zonia, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. I forgot I wanted to adjust the roll settings. Let's make roll really. Well, you know what? I'll wait till I'm on approach. Discount engineer, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Have you adjusted the brake power? I put it up to 75% as opposed to 50 Sorry, he was mostly lurking. No worries. Lurk away. Mm. 
perfect landing. Now to the lurk again, fair enough. So, it, so you're telling me it just goes from an absolute value for vertical speed, it doesn't care about the angle. ASP gears are paper thin, yeah they are. Especially the ones that you stuck with at the beginning. Seventy meters per second, though. Now that was ridiculous. That should have been the perfect landing. Right at the edge of the runway as well. I've never seen a plane come apart so quickly from such a slow landing either. While surface speed is important as to whether you stay inside the runway, it's the vertical speed that determines... Yeah, that's what I was saying, that it, it doesn't make sense, that it's just checking the absolute value of the vertical speed. Gonna slow down in time. Possibly 180. This might be doable. Need to start pulling up more early before we suddenly dip at the end. Or at least set the trim higher early. And tap it down. Have it have it want to pull up as opposed to the other way around. We're still 144, this is not good. Let's sell vertical speed. Where is my vertical speed? I don't have Kerbal Engineer on this thing. So how did anyone... Oh, it's here, right? This crappy analog view. At the top, indeed. I wonder if I could turn around before the hills. Probably a bit ambitious. A and keep the low speed, that is. Yeah, this is, this is feeling a bit ambitious. It's feeling a bit wobbly. how long it takes to adjust the trim. Why can't we have that but faster? Now we're actually super slow. I didn't even notice. Maybe I could have pulled it off. This is probably suicide. Yeah, we're not slowing down in time now. It gets so much more wobbly at low speed. With the side to side. The plane is not bleeding speed fast enough on a straight, yeah. Despite the ridiculous air brakes. It's just, it, it's Ferrum Aerospace. 
that's why. The atmosphere is extremely thin by comparison. Well, it's extremely thin by comparison to old vanilla. Uh, vanilla got less ridiculous with the atmosphere soup eventually. Fifty. This might be okay. One forty-four. Step down a bit. One thirty-three. Please don't sway left and right. 112. 108. It's taking so long to get to the left a little bit. 98. Every time I glance at some other part of the screen, it's like I've shifted two meters to the right. 87, and we're dead. Cool, cool, cool. You're going down too fast? That should not be too fast. It just shouldn't. More to the point, how the hell do I solve this problem of the sideways swaying when this thing goes slow. Maybe try not relying too heavily on the trim and just tapping to adjust. If I tap to adjust that much, it's just going to plow into the ground every time I'm not, like every nanosecond that I'm not tapping it. We're going to sway up and down and up and down and up and down. Like every quarter of a second. be able to lose quite a bit of speed by turning like this. Not as much as I thought, actually. How about another lap? Yeah, that's more than we need. Let's give it a little thrust. Maybe not that much. And trim go down. Oh, we're not braking. And I misclicked like three times. And we're still at 140 meters per second. That might be okay, actually. Hundred and thirty-five. Hundred and twenty-seven. 
123, flare up a bit, 116, 110, and too much runway left, serious? Okay, that was way less than 5 vertical meters per second. That was 2 meters per second vertical. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, what does... does it say the tolerance of these things somewhere? Let's look at the hangar. If this is modded, something is wrong. Does it say the part tolerance? 125 meters per second. We were well below that, and we touched down at vertically 2 meters per second. Not the front. Yeah, no, I know it's not the front, but these parts are the ones that break first every time. This one's actually 325 meters per second. It's, it's tougher. It's a lot tougher. Something's not right here. Maybe those are stock settings and bar says no. Your landing gear will explode at the slightest provocation. Because it's not enough that we give you no way to break. Uh, takeoff is pretty smooth nowadays. Could drop brake force. Mm. Let's drop it back to 50. Let's check if that's... If changing that variable is somehow making them instantly explode. This might be okay. Hundred twenty five. I have to lose altitude as well, though. Let's see if I can stall it a bit close to the runway. It's drifting left and right so much. 109... 106... 102... Uh, we've lost too much runway here. I'm curious though... Maybe it is that the brakes were set higher. then ram it to 100% after touchdown? Uh, maybe. It does actually get changed both at the same time, right? I'm 
going to adjust the roll settings as well. Standard control. Roll 20%. These ones are zero. I think. Yep. Did I switch this off? No, I didn't. No reaction wheels. Should have removed the monoprop, but I guess I'll just leave it there for the weight balance. Maybe the relative speed of the brakes caused it to overload? Overload how? It shouldn't happen instantly. Like, if we saw it slow down violently and the nose went into the ground or something, that would at least make sense. That's not what's happening. They're just going up like the match, uh, Matchstick City the moment the runway is touched. I forgot how much I nerfed the roll. we can slow down from here? 200 meters a second? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, we're already at 160. It should be okay. I hope. Forty-five, one thirty-nine. Oh god, the steering. Not like this. Not like this. One twenty-five. We're too high. One twenty. One twelve. We've lost half the runway. Okay, fine. Speed up again. Maybe the relative speed. I appreciate how unfazed the Kerbals are with doing things like corkscrews and whatnot. Those are the easy parts. Let's improve that, actually. 50%. How's that? Too little, too late right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, we're good, actually. We're fine.
Uh, I didn't notice how bad my vertical speed was. Okay. And it's suddenly positive here. Alright, 123. This might be doable if I can stabilize the horizontal. sideways please oh my god are you serious right now okay okay break 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 nope we're dead it actually stabilized at like half a meter of altitude above the runway Mobile career mode, indeed. Bohaz, um, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think the moment that I take off, I'm gonna drop my speed. And I'm gonna figure out exactly how fast this thing can go. Exactly how slow it can go. What's the slowest speed we can maintain in this thing? What mod is causing all these issues? Uh, it's mostly Ferrum's fault. Ferrum Aerospace. It makes aerodynamics a lot more realistic. But there's a lot less atmosphere, and you don't have... You don't have many options for brakes. That's the only reason we've got these four things sticking out at the back, so that we can... close them up like that. To give ourselves some drag. Okay, so I'm going to give it, like, 5% thrust. Okay, let's just break until we get down to, like, 100. We know we can go 100. Right? Although we need a certain amount of uh, pitch trim. But how much thrust does it take to maintain slowest possible flying speed? One fifty. That's going... that's slowing down now that we're going up again. I want it to just maintain the altitude, though. And that's kind of close. 135? speeding up now. Maybe I should put uh, AOS on this thing so I could put in a command like maintain a heading. It'd be hard to undo it though in real time. 120. Let's try turning around very carefully. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need to give it some thrust for this. I think we can maintain 110 or so, something like that.
Where's my heading? Oh, there it is. Okay. One more thrust, please. Just like 5%. Where's the bloody runway? I need to go a little bit further to the left. Keep it steady. What's our speed? 116. Yeah, I don't think this is enough thrust to go indefinitely. I see the runway. Why is it like this when I'm just trying to make the tiniest adjustments to heading at this speed? Please turn to the right. Oh right, I forgot, rudder does nothing. Why am I not rolling? Oh my god. Look at that wobble. Okay, I think 100 or 110 is about our minimum to have any real control. It's not just how much lift we have. This would be a good approach if not for the swaying left and right. Okay, we're already down to 104 the edge of the runway. And... pull up. Ninety-six. Ninety-three. Break. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Why? Why? Why are you like this? So 75% brake strength is still approximately zero. Like, it's still going to take two runways to slow down. I, I honestly don't know what to do at this point. should probably just give up on the idea of having a basic plane before we have higher tech. Pretty sure I end up coming to similar conclusions. Like, I, I've made them work, but it wasn't worth the effort, you know? It should not be this difficult to land, though.
I am curious as to whether moving the engines off of the wings. I know we're clipping, I just want to try this. Uh, whether it would have much less of a problem with wobbling left and right when it goes slow. That all looks pretty stable. I should have looked at the... I should have looked at the side slope derivatives before I moved the engines. Let's see. Can I just undo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so at point 0.2, negative 2.9, negative 3.3, which means it's pushing back toward the center faster, which means this is going to be less bad. As in, putting the engines towards the middle is going to make it less bad, if I understand this right. Change in y direction acceleration with respect to side slip angle should be negative. But it probably shouldn't be so big that it keeps overcorrecting and wobbling back and forth. Is there a redo button? I don't think so. Alright, just shove those over there. I won't be bothering to do the calculations again. That should be fine. This is fine, indeed. The engine's gonna work. Yes. I just want to see how much less severe it is. Um, maybe because I made these wings heavier, it's not as good as well. It seems to be going straighter as well. Like, really straight. Hmm. Does it like having its mass in the center that much? So I was going to change these back. view so that we can see if we're lined up with the runway. Except I can't see if we're falling. There. Yeah, no, this is this is not good. Not with the cockpit view they give us anyway. I think I need more oomph. Oh, we're already down to 93. And that side wobble is nowhere near as bad. Yeah. Um, am I really not able to pull up? Serious? Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And the side wobble is gonna kill us all again. Oh no. Oh no. May or may not have been the side wobble. I like his face, indeed. Seems more stable. Yeah, it really was. More than I expected. 
especially considering the numbers. Um, I wonder if removing that double mass from these wings that I added on after they spontaneously combusted uh, is going to make it less bad as well. It seems to correlate with the plane going straight on the runway. It shouldn't, because it's supposed to be symmetrical, but it does seem to have something to do with it. I think I'd like to move the center of lift forward as well, so we don't have to fight it with pitch quite so hard. Maybe we should bleed some more speed. add additional air brakes on the main wing. Not really. I mean, I guess I could... If I added these, so we had two of them on each wing, I could have them... Yeah, I could have them act as spoilers in opposite directions. That might have been a better idea in the first place. There would still be a net hitch uh, adjustment from having them active, unless I, like, tweaked it so that they had different ratios. The ones on the outside would have to be a smaller spoiler act. Okay, 120 per second, that might be okay. And set it to ground. Yeah, it's still kind of bad, but we've got a lot less side-to-side -side wobble. We can actually make an adjustment and have some hope of it stabilizing by the time we're touching down. I'm pulling up as hard as I can right now. And our vertical speed just went... <gasps> I wasn't able to pitch up high enough right at the end, otherwise it would have been good. Um, what if instead of this nonsense... We have like... How do I make this work again? There we go. Won't use these as spoiler. And we will use these as spoilers. In opposite directions. Now we're cooking. 
We'll see. Um, standard control. Roll? Hmm. I don't think it was rolling too fast that was the problem that had us swinging left and right. Whatever the case, the middle ones don't have to concern themselves with the roll. Uh, your... No, absolutely not. Pitch, yes. And... Control deflect. Probably the ones in the middle could be stronger? Well, these are quite small, right? Regardless. I don't know, we'll play around with it. Flap slash spoiler. Spoiler deflect. About 85. Spoiler, yes. And then these ones are going to be the opposite. Spoiler. Flap slash spoiler deflect. Negative 85. This will need some adjustment. In fact, it should probably be the other way around anything. Uh, pitch, yes. Roll a little bit more. And these ones? Probably just pitch. And absolutely not flap spoiler. Let's see the indicators. I don't want the center of lift a bit further forward, probably. Negative sixteen point five. Two meters per second squared. Is that smaller or bigger than we had before? It should be smaller. I think it was on a whole other scale. Negative 3.1. Negative 11.5. Wait, what? It gets worse as we go faster? I'm not sure if I understand. Well, everything's green anyway, so it shouldn't be too bad. That looks very good. That actually looks perfect. The angle of attack sweep. Alright, we'll give it a try. Do I need to change any other settings first? Probably not. Like, whoops. I can try pushing this thing forward enough so that theoretically we should actually be able to lift off before the runway runs out. But I can so see it slamming the butt of the plane into the ground. Let's just give it a go anyway. really careful. Alright, so flaps work fine. Well, not flaps, that's not what I meant. Did I make this one not allowed to roll? Did I get it backwards? Uh, not quite. Roll no. Your no. That's what I thought I did before. Oh, it's so wobbly. Oh no, why? Why though? <laughs> why though? Why so wobbly? All of a sudden. Is it because I brought the wheels forward? Be. It's going 
going straight this time. Yeah, I think it was. It was just the wheels. How are you supposed to have the center of lift at or behind the back wheels so that it can actually lift off without driving off a cliff? But also... Oh, that's fast. And smooth. Ooh. Okay. Um... Yeah, you're not supposed to pitch and roll. Stop, uh, you're and roll. Stop that. That's a bit closer to what I was expecting. Spin stabilize. Spin to win. While I try and adjust the pitch trim. Still 200 meters per second. Oh crap. Uh, I don't think our spoilers are working. Okay. Let's see. Flap slash spoiler. It's not active. And it's not set. What the hell? Spoiler active. And... Negative 85. Whoa! No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, and this one. Positive 85. Spoiler active. So then, that's super violent. That should be approximate- holy crap. Holy crap, how much speed did I just lose? Oh no! Um, task failed successfully. Oh no. Okay. Let's try and make sure that actually does get saved from the space plane hanging this time. Uh, pitch, yes. Yord, no. Roll, no. That's from the middle. Um, spoiler, negative 85. Active. And then this should be the same. Actually, it should be allowed to roll. At least a little bit. Uh, spoiler, active, positive 85. Okay, and this thing... Absolutely not flap or spoiler. No roll, no yaw, only pitch. That should be fine. Can I save it? Make sure that actually sticks this time? Alright, so this is a bit extreme, but... You can see the idea. So that we can get some air brakes. It's just a solid wall of air brake. I think this is going to be way more than we need. I certainly hope so. Based on that last little experiment, it should be way more than we need. Um, and then roll. It's just the ones on the side. And for some reason, the fin get out of here. Actually, that's probably fine. Uh, only the fin is for your which I'd never used anyway. Uh, what, what am I trying to change here? Control, wheel authority, it's already switched off. 
Okay. Let's try it. I wonder if we could actually take off from the runway with this. 110? Nope. Yeah, it's the wheels bumping into the ground, that's why we can't take off. But when we move them forward, uh, bad things happen. Okay. So let's just get up to speed at a decent altitude. Fifty. All right. It's air brake time. Two seventy, two seventy-five, two eighty. I'm gonna leave the engine on. Two ninety and two hundred. Holy crap! Well, that was. I I think I think we have enough air brake. I think we can adjust this down until it doesn't send us into a flat spin. Um, that might be a little more effective. Nope. Almost had it. Come on. Yes. No. Yeah. Can I not stabilize, really? Nope. Okay then. Okay then. Eject mailman. That's a slightly violent air break. I have to say, I expected something extreme, and it really exceeded expectations. Uh, let's set this thing down to like... How about... Negative 33. And this one's positive 33. And to make them actually pitch neutral, one of these would have to be adjusted. Probably... I don't know, actually. Does it actually matter for pitch if they're further from the center? I don't think it does. Hmm. All right, see how that goes. I can't believe how much more effective that is than what we were doing. This means we can actually a approach the runway with a lot more speed and control, and then just bleed it off at the last minute. Apparently what we need is wheels that transform their position as we're on the runway or something. Or just retract the landing gear as we attempt to take off. That sounds safe. Alright, let's get up to speed again a decent altitude. Not that the altitude saved us when we overdid it. Two 
to 50 meters per second to 70 to 80 let's try let's go to 300 this time if we can oh easily we can probably reach Mach 1 it's like 330 ish right depending on the atmospheric density Three thirty. Three thirty-five. All right. We're, I'm pretty sure we're at uh, or beyond Mac One now. And air brake. Three forty-eight. Three forty-nine. Three fifty. Brake and go down to three hundred already. And it makes us pull up, which I don't know. It depends how violently it makes us pull up. And we're actually slowing down. But we're already down to 150. And I haven't uh, turned off the engine either. 130? Yeah. I think this will be strong enough. Question is... Does the pitch adjustment make it a problem? Or does it actually help? Planes are supposed to face a few degrees up when on wheels uh, for both better takeoff and landing. Not necessarily, but that's certainly an option we could try. Wasting so much energy pushing this hard against the atmosphere. Alright, engine off. I don't think we'll need it. From here. We are actually losing speed, even though we're going down. Not very much, though. And air brake. Holy crap. Nope, that's... That's still way too strong. Um... Can I stabilize? Okay. 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 I think I got it. I think I got it. Uh, I can try landing with this if I just tap it very gently. Just feather the brake. No, I think what I really need is to adjust it so that it doesn't pull us up. I do like how quickly it, it bleeds speed, though. Hmm. The side-to-side -side wobble is still so bad when we get down to like 100 meters per second. Oh god. Oh god, why? No, not like this. No. Uh. Hmm. I think it's the shape of the plane now, like too much wing surface. It, it's very pancakeable, this one. Maybe we don't even need these back here. Let's see. 
Yeah, that should still be okay, actually. Where's your center of lift? It's still behind the center of mass. After I removed that. Sweep AOA. Looks fine. And... Forward velocity derivative at super slow, slow speed is a bit in the red. It's barely in the red. Point two. What's this? Change in roll right angular acceleration with expect to an side slip angle should be negative. You're telling me a side slip is going to make us roll right? If we're side slipping to the right, I'm guessing? Was it because I removed those winglets? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Hmm. But side slip is the problem. Or it's a problem anyway. That might help. Good. Yeah, more... More rudder. Might help to prevent that. At this point, we're close to a tomcat. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so which way would it, if, if giving these two equal and opposite pitches when we activate the air brake causes the plane to pull up, which way do you think it is that one of these has to be weaker or stronger? I'm going to grab a drink. Outside weaker? I would have thought it would only matter if we're rolling, but my intuition agrees with you that if if if, if it's one of them, it's probably the outside that should be weaker. Let's try setting this to like 22 as opposed to 33. And see if we are closer or further from why is the center of lift down there? <laughs> Uh, see if we're closer to or further from pitch neutral air brake. Also, did this have default settings on it now? No, we're good. Alright, let's give that a try. begin. And now we can see where we're going. It's also probably more stable adjusting the turn on the runway. It's, it definitely feels like it. So good. 
I want to try and induce that side-to-side -side wobble. Not enough to crash, please. Let's see if it stabilizes faster. I think it is stabilizing faster. It, it certainly feels that way. I could maybe put some baby fins that go vertical in a few in a couple more places if we really feel the need. All right, are we high enough and fast uh, fast enough to test our air brakes? I would say so. Two eighty two meters per second. Let's pitch down a bit. Once we hit 300, I'll hit the air brake. It's still pitching up. I think it might be slower, but then when we're going this fast, uh, it was slower anyway. Let's try slowing down a bit. Which is actually happening quite quickly. Why is it rolling? I'm not doing that. Wait. You're joking. Did it not change these symmetrically? No, it's like trying to roll by itself. What the hell? Lap spoiler, 22, 22. Lap spoiler, negative 33, negative 33. Okay. Let's get to like 190-ish, nice and straight. And brake goes up a little too violently. Um, the one in the middle should be pushing it down, so... I could either reduce this one some more, or I could increase this one. I think I should probably reduce this one, I guess. Put it down to like 11. So it's now one third of the one in the middle. It still pulls up. Not very much though. Can we get away with pushing this one further? Like negative 44? Oh, that's good. Why doesn't that push us down like crazy? That's really strange. But we might have found our numbers. So negative 44 and positive 11. We're now traveling at 127 meters per second horizontally. And you can barely feel it when we, when we hit the brakes. Okay, negative 44, positive 11. And I didn't pay that much attention to... Um, To just how fast the air brake was working, but I think it's probably going to be sufficient. Okay. Let's see if we can actually let it stay. So the brakes are much more stable. Uh, the side-to-side -side wobble, which is still not great, is certainly a lot less bad now.
And I don't think I need as much pitch to control it as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're actually getting somewhere. Nice, stable plane. Fairly maneuverable as well. Alright, if the brakes are as good as we hope they are, uh, I should be able to just turn around whenever I want here. the engine though. And brakes. Down to 200 already. 180, 170. 145. Okay, we can maybe stop braking now. We can actually apply them bit by bit from now on. 150, 140... I was gonna say don't forget to lower the landing gear. Lol. The side-to-side -side wobble is so much less bad now. 125... 120... Alright, more brakes. Stabilize a bit, then brake more. Brake. <gasps> ah, so close. It's doable. But now I'm in this awkward position where... I have to feather the brakes. I can't, like, leave them on. So I have to pay attention to three things at once. It's both easier and harder. But the last bit where we actually touch down should be a hundred times more stable. Maybe I should make the air brakes weaker. Because when I activate them, I want... To, s to steadily, somewhat quickly, like maybe a couple of meters per second per second is how quickly I want to lose speed. Maybe a little bit more. How fast is it right now? 330, 220, yeah. It kind of accelerates. And then it's like... 10 meters per second per second, once it gets going. I think I want something a bit less violent. Oops. Six is a good approach speed, I think. Let's do fine control so we don't bounce every time I touch a key. 110... It's so responsive to the pitch. I should have used... I should have used trim for that part. Oh god, why? It 
it really is the controls at this point. And I should rely on Trim more for the final approach. I was wobbling up and down like crazy because of the digital input, even with fine controls. Like, fine controls just enable you to do this, but slower is the only problem. What we really, what I, what I really want is trim, but faster. Better yet, if if I could make pitch work like trim, but roll and yaw just work like they usually do. They reset back to center. That would be ideal. Is this our delta V? Yeah. a very aggressive approach. We've got some altitude though. I'm losing speed too fast. Actually I take it back, this is a pretty good setting for the brakes. You can actually lose speed at a respectable pace even though we're losing altitude. That's not great. Should have used trim, like I said. It's too late now. I don't have time to adjust it. And we're wobbling like crazy again. What am I supposed to do? Approach from a perfectly straight line two kilometers away, even though I can't see the runway properly or where the plane is pointing because both the cockpit and third person view are suboptimal for that. I mean I can see I can see where we're pointing properly with the cockpit view, but I can't really see my instruments. Crashed nicely, RPHL. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Up we go. Yeah, you have a much better sense of like how much we're pitching and where we're actually pointing from the cockpit view. But what information? Altitude. Where's the altimeter? That's speed. This thing? I'm supposed to rely on this thing to know my altitude? Oof, owie. Lower wing tilt ability until adjust for low speed is feasible? What? Lower wing tilt adjust. Do you mean I should angle some of the, the smaller wings?
Where's the runway? Can't tell. Also, I can't see if my brakes are on. That doesn't help. That that's that's not a minor detail. Oh no. Where where does it show brakes? I can't see them anywhere. Oh, I think I remember having a mod that would actually show much more information from the cockpit. I'm gonna have to dig that one out. Oh god, oh no. Oh no. No. No, 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 no. 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 No, thank you. Yeah, I remember having an actually good cockpit mod. You could theoretically do entire missions in it. Can't you just catapult before crashing? Oh no. You leave my favorite mech out of this. Alright. This looks like a decent approach. Hypothetically. Maybe there's a mod that lets me do exactly what I'm describing, where pitch... Pitch works like trim, and is faster, and everything else works like normal. And we slow down. One forty is probably slow enough for now. This could be it. Is this not the cleanest approach we've had? You know what? I should really make these... Uh, deflect less. That way I can actually use the tappy tap without completely destabilizing us. Brakes are on. We're at 120. 115. 100. Oh, I forgot to change this. We're five meters above. Holy crap. Holy crap. Why? Did anyone see what speed we were at when we actually touched down? It would be very useful if the flight log actually told us that instead of just what part broke first. Where's G-Force and Duand? Highest speed over land. Oh, that was like flying. Okay. I was going to say, I don't think we ever reached 300 meters per second on the ground. 85-ish? That should be slow enough. I was looking at the... The altitude and the vertical speed. The vertical speed was like negative 2. I approve this. Nice explosion. I really don't know why that wasn't a good enough landing. Maybe I should adjust the extras for these. Spring strength. Damper strength. It'd be great if it told us exactly what this actually means. Like, if I, if I lower the spring strength, is it more loosey-goosey? I'm only twice as confused about the damper strength. There was 75 meters per second surface speed bottom left corner. Yeah, after I was done crashing. So we might have lost like, well, 10 meters per second by then.
Didn't the brakes need to be 50%? Um, I don't know if they do. We can try it. Spring dampener. I have no idea what either of these are going to actually do. Besides which, this part here mostly looks pretty damn rigid. What did I change? The brake strength. I'm going to bet just about anything that if we save this design and come back later with better landing gear, we're going to find out it's just, just infinitely easier to land. Because the plane itself isn't that bad now. It's actually pretty easy to have a stable approach. Oh yeah, I forgot I wanted to change these. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh-oh. Um, standard control... 10 degrees or less? So that when I tap it like this, it's not going to be as violent. What if you order your gnome slaves to gather at the landing to catch you? Are you are you referring to the Kerbals? Let's do a loop de loop to try and stay on target. the worst that could happen. We're actually still losing speed. Oh, I have the brakes on. Even so. Can I... Camera chase. There we go. Does that actually keep me facing the same way as the plane? Uh, not vertically, that's for sure. Pull up, pull up. Uh-oh. Really, pull up. And speed up as well. Uh-oh, that may have been too little too late. Uh-oh. Okay, I think we're fine. Now, can we still land? I think we can. I think we can. I think we can. Maybe a bit more thrust for a moment. Please stop wobbling so much just because I want to turn ever so slightly. Okay. No. Needs more thrust. No. No. We almost landed, I think. Probably shouldn't have tried it from there. I saw Jet having parachutes helping them to decelerate. Does this have one? It does not. Could always try. It really shouldn't 
need them, but then these landing gear are just so good. Let's go with utility rouge. Does that mirror it properly? It does. Could the center of mass further to the rear cause more shake in the rear? Um, is it that far behind? Maybe. What if we push this to 240 and this one is empty of fuel? Center of lift is still behind. It's probably going to be about as stable. Almost everything in the green in the usual way. It's going to want to pitch down harder now, but as long as we can more than compensate it, uh, more than compensate, more than compensate for it without control surfaces, it should be fine. Is there wind blowing today? No. Tomcats have dump trucks. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. What did I change? Oh yeah, I added the shoot. That was the main thing. We still have to. We're still gonna have to do ninety nine percent of the work to um, land safely. It's just going to mean that we can decelerate a lot faster once we hit the ground. some speed up. You know, with modern technologies, planes can land in automatic mode. Indeed. I'm actually going to ride an autopilot to land planes. But I'm not attempting it while we're stuck with these frickin' things. Alright. Up we go. the engine. Reset our trim. Air brake. Hitch up again. Keep a little speed this time before we get there. In fact, give me a little bit of thrust so we can maintain 150 ish or whatever. first. I need to see the rest of that runway. Alright, brakes are on. Why is it rolling to the right? I didn't do that. And do 
you shoot? What's the worst that could happen? Uh, everything. Actually. Yeah, I think uh, we have to land before we trigger those. I don't know why it was rolling to the right um, after I thought I'd finished making those little adjustments. That wasn't me. I knew it would be difficult with the with the most basic gear making a plane work with Ferrum. Uh but I didn't think it would be quite this bad. By a factor of ten. Do you pay for each plane you crash? No, I'm forcing it to reset. I've killed enough Kerbals. These are all simulations, okay? Simulations. I should probably throw away the swept wings and just... Make the chunkiest glider that I possibly can, so it can be as stable as possible at slow speed. the part where the third person cam is terrible. It's so hard to tell if we've lined up the runway properly. Oh my god, the brakes are still on. Okay, 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 okay. Back up to 110-ish. More speed, please. Now, can we stop going left and right? Why does it roll? When I try to slow down. Why do symmetrical planes do asymmetrical things? Should have triggered this earlier. I don't understand. I can't remember them specifically, but I know there are certain parts where I think you put them on symmetrically and you didn't do it wrong, but it. It, the craft isn't actually symmetrical. There might be some of that going on here. In fact, I'm almost certain of it. Like, maybe the way these are rotated or something? So when we try to break, we get a little bit of roll to one side. Which we normally don't notice, but when we're slow, it's severe. I think this model won't do. Is there another one? <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, I'm going to ditch the swept wings. We're going to use these blocks. So that we have the chunkiest, the slowest glide slope possible. Can I figure out just with Ferrum's calculations 
how slow it's gonna have lift. Can I angle these so that we effectively have an angle of attack starting at like two degrees or something? Yes, yes I can. Cool. So let's do that. Just a little angle. That's maybe too much already. So at zero degrees, it's got plenty of lift here. At point at mark point two, that is. At point one, it's still got lift. Uh, how fast is that? Switch to data thingamajig. What's this? MW. Change in pitch up angular acceleration with respect to Z direction should be negative. It means it's trying to pitch up by default. As long as it's a very small number, that's okay. But I was just placing those wings without much care for where the center of mass was at this point. So I can just move those back. Um, calculate again. If it is going to be red, I want it to be very small. Point oh three seven. Point oh three two. It's kind of clipping into this stuff now. Can I put even more wing back here? I don't really have the right triangle piece that I had in mind. Um, but more importantly, how slow can it go and still have lift? 0 0.1 is only 34 meters per second. Okay, um... Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Alright, uh... Analysis, sweep AOA. Uh, zero point... Max zero point one. It says it has lift. At 34 meters per second, really? <laughs> Okay. Let's try that. Should I try and make the uh, make the number go green, or should we just accept that it's very gently going to want to pull up? I think that's probably fine. You'll never get it to be zero anyway. It, it, it is like the opposite of a dart. It is a bit unstable. But as long as we stay close enough to prograde, it won't actually matter. Okay. Commence flight of the dodo. And I wouldn't be overly surprised if this thing lifted off um, without finding the end of the runway. Needs a bit of a turn to the right. Oh, you, oh holy crap. Okay, that's a bit more unstable than I was expecting. Wow. Uh, how many decimal points did we have on that red number? 0 0.32. I guess that's not that extreme. Um, can we maybe... Maybe I could move this back a bit. Hmm. 
Well, that, that itself would move the center of lift. It's still, like, basically the same. So almost all the lift is on the wings. 0 0.27... Yeah, I think we needed, like, two more zeros before it, the decimal places for that to be practically stable. Let's stick with it. 0 0.09... How much freaking further back do I have to put everything? Zero point zero zero five. This thing's starting to look very silly. Let's try that. H how are you? Oh right, didn't I move the center of mass forward by changing the fuel around? I can't remember why I did that. Um, because of the where the wings were, I guess. Let's fix that. Uh, say 120 fuel in each of these, and then calculate again. 0 0.032. Oh, wait, I moved the center of mass further back. 240, 0. 0. 0.005. Alright. What if I turn that into a structural piece instead? Where is it? Structural, we don't have it. Well, yeah, I can't. There's no such thing as the structural piece, not until we unlock it. Lamau. All right. Well, how severe is that number now? Zero point zero zero five meters per square uh, meters per second. Uh, meter second negative one. Wait, what? What kind of unit is that? Anyway, we'll see if it isn't... We'll see if that red number is small enough not to be violently um, aggressive. Wanting to pitch up... Ah, uh, I just realized. I didn't check it at different speeds. It probably gets worse as it gets faster. Oh, I could remove these little things to move the center of lift backward. Is it going to lift off? Yep. And... It's kind of stable. Kind of. It it automatically pulls up too fast and then has to like dip back automatically. But no, it actually it actually works. Alright, what if we trim and pitch down a bit? Oh, I have no roll, literally. Um <laughs> because I set these to not respond to roll inputs. Gotta say, not a fan of square wings, yeah. Let's see where the center of lift goes if I remove these little things at the front. Center of lift, wherefore art thou? Is it in the floor again? It'll probably show up once I move this. Nope, there it goes. And undo. And now I can't see it. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, it's in the ground. Why are you like this? Well, anyway, let's see how that affects the stats. We're in the green. That was all it took. Okay. Look at that. At, at half of Mach 1, so like 150... 165 meters per second? Uh, we get, uh, it inverts. It starts trying to pitch up. And it looks like it gets worse as it goes faster. 
Huh. That's no good. Not unless we keep our speed down. So we need to stay below like 136. <laughs> Uh, below 170 anyway. Below 150, I think. One, yeah, no, 136 meters per second. And it inverts. Um, can I not just... I really don't want to move these even further back. Mm. Also, this thing might be more stable horizontally, so we might not need all of that. Well, I definitely need some control surfaces. Uh, maybe with something closer to default settings. Fine. Put these up here. It's not like this goes badly for us every time we do it. Alright, where's our center of lift now? It never used to be this picky. Why is it not moving? What? You're telling me the center of mass is still in- is still behind the center of lift with this. Really? I'm gonna- I'm, I think Ferrum's gonna say no it isn't. Change in pitch with respect to pitch control input is severely negative, but that's at 34 meters per second. Oh, it's still severely negative at 68. Wait a sec. We don't have anything to affect pitch based on... Yeah, that might help. Um, how about... How about... What if we put a winglet at the front? No, we're trying to bring the center of lift behind the center of mass. How is it this far forward? It literally should be like here. I know that Ferrum does lifting bodies, but still. Brunon Kerbal, could you explain what you're trying to do? Uh, this blue ball right here is approximately the center of the lift that we're going to get from aerodynamic forces. We usually want it to be behind the center of mass, just because that's more stable. Uh, think of a dart, for example. If it's in front, uh, usually the craft will pitch up, which I would be fine with. What I'm not fine with is the part where it, it, it kind of, like, Pitches up more and more violently. And loses control. How? How is the center of lift in front of the center of mass here? It makes no sense. Well, that's one way to do it if I'm if I just put lots of fuel in the middle. Mission goals? Uh, make a plane that works despite crappy parts. With Ferrum Aerospace. I mean, like, the big picture? Yeah, okay, okay. Um... It doesn't look right to me that the wings would have to be that far back. Let's see what Ferrum has to say about it. Green, not green. That is a very small red number. Oh, we haven't done the pitch control yet. I forgot again. How about we just put them here?
There we go. Alright. Green, 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 green. Should be stable up to Mach 1. How slow can it go and have lift? Very slow. Uh, apparently it has lift... Well, I don't know what kind of scale we're at, whether that's enough to take off or anything. Um, but basically it has lift no matter how slow it's going. Which was the whole point of angling the wings like that. Virgin Galactic style or regular jet? Uh... Regular jet? Um... So I don't want... I don't want these things on the side trying to affect your... Pitch and roll are fine. Roll we should probably calm down a bit on. And probably control deflect is a bit high. But we'll see. And I'm not even thinking about spoilers yet. Let's just see how this goes. How heavy is it? Six ton. That shouldn't be too bad. All right. So again, this should take off just facing forward on the runway, no control input. And hopefully this time, uh, not violently try to pitch up. Eighty meters per second, and well. It tried to take off by itself alright, but now our perfectly symmetrical plane is tilting to the side. Because reasons. Not sure exactly what those reasons are, but... Probably if we bring these forward, it could be less bad. Probably. Let's try that again. Hopefully the wheels aren't so far forward that we're going to blow up on landing without realizing that we're hitting our butt against the runway. There might be a reason why they don't put square wings on planes anymore. <laughs> Indeed. Um, maybe the center of thrust is too much of a pro- yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are we going to put these things? Underneath? Is that a problem? Can I just put them in the wings? We're, we're just going to pretend we didn't see that. Uh, why? Why should the wings have to be this far back? It doesn't make sense. A bird wings back? <laughs> back towards the rear of them and I just didn't notice. I could maybe put these up here, but I don't know how far forward they have to be for the engines to actually work and not claim that they've been blocked. Aram says it's good. Do the engines work? Read the words. Good to see you again. Welcome, Malcolm. Hope you're doing well. The engines refuse to work. Cool, cool, cool. Lovely. I love everything about this. Um, 
I guess we could... This is going to look so very stable. I guess we could put these here. Yeah, what doesn't look safe about that? Do we have struts? We actually don't have struts. Uh, where's our center of lift, center of mass? That looks pretty good, actually. Um, let's see. Looks like it should be stable at any speed up to 0.9, max 0.9. I don't know if this thing's even going to reach Mac, uh, Mach 0.9 with all that drag. Yeah, that should be okay. Can I make it stable at high speed, though? What would I change? If I move this back a bit... What just became unstable? Forward velocity derivative. Hmm. Why can't I calculate? Now the center of lift is in front of the center of mass. Uh, oh, that's 2.9. That is ridiculously fast. Yeah, we're not going Mach 3 in this thing. Believe it or not. No, that was point nine where it got ba where it got bad. Hmm. Well, the whole point of this design was that it could go slow, so we could actually land this thing despite these terrible landing gear. Anyway. Um. Let's try it. Now that the center of thrust is not above the center of mass. I could put the wings up here, that might make more sense. In any case, it looks a bit more stable. And... it's drifting to the side again. Why? What? We make it simpler, and it gets worse. How's this? Why is that so wonky? What the... Uh, what? Is it symmetrical or no? What? Why are you like this? Right, let's see what that looks like. Seems reasonable. Maybe I should put little fins back here again. is allegedly stable in flight. It's probably going to do the exact same BS on the runway, though. I think this needs to be further forward. Maybe I could get rid of that tail almost entirely. Do I have a smaller fuel tank for this? I've actually got a procedural solid rocket booster. Oh, that's engines. No, the only Mark 1 liquid engine is this size. Oh, what about this? 
I could drain the oxidizer out of it. Dry mass 0.125 tons. Dry mass 0.25 um, Isn't this just going to make it hard to have the submarine left behind again? Nope, doesn't seem that way. Look at this goofy little thing. Okay. Let's move that down a bit. And probably forward a bit. And let's check what Ferrum has to say about it. That looks good. And what about at different speeds? Stability. Okay, uh... On paper, it's stable up to like 0 0.8 something. Up to about 290 meters per second. Which is all we can really ask for of these little engines. Do you have the parts to create a VTOL? No, not right now. That might solve your stability issues. Uh, I actually did make a VTOL. Um, I, I'm going to need another mod to do that. But you can attach parts that, like, rotate bits and stuff. Alright, let's see how that goes. Did I configure this? Yes, I did. Fantastic. Uh, this guy, on the other hand... Uh, nothing to do with pitch, please. Oh, wrong button. Pretty sure I just saved it, though. Alright, this time... We've made the dodo from Grand Theft Auto. What could go wrong? That's right, nothing. That thousandth time the charm, indeed. Why? Why is it drifting? Why do symmetrical planes do asymmetrical things? We're pitching down violently while I'm trying to adjust the trim up. There we go. Well, it seems to be pretty stable after the ordeal of takeoff. I just remembered I don't have air brakes. So how slow can we go in this thing? That's the point of this design. I hate that the regime where we've got stability is the regime where we have to pitch up all the time to compensate 
for the natural inclination of the, of the aircraft. Now let's just uh, keep it going like this and see at what point we stop gliding. We're still going up right now. Hundred and fifteen up oh, and altitude is dropping. Hundred and ten or eleven. Or is it just because I allow allowed it to pitch down? No, I, I think our limit is like one twenty ish. Maybe a bit lower. Let's add ever so slightly more engine. Maybe a little bit more at the moment. Pretty good though. About 114. Alright, can we... Can we not be murdered by the landing gear? On takeoff? Is that a possibility? What would I have to do to accomplish that? Is this thing actually... Oh, it's actually facing up to begin with. A lot more than I thought? Really? 250 miles per hour? Disable auto stab? What do you mean auto stab? Um, yeah, this thing is pitching up more than I. Well, not pitching. Um, well, it's facing like one degree up, maybe, as a matter of fact. Yeah, what do you, what do you mean by auto stab? Oh, was that supposed to be a joke? So what exactly is it doing? Auto-stabilizer? No, there isn't. I'm not using that at all. I've got no SAS. I've got, um... I've even got the reaction wheels turned off in the cockpit. Now why would it do this? Now intuition and all the data tells us that it should be lifting off automatically. Uh, but what we seem to be getting instead is like it's being forced down like this. I think that's why the wheels are getting weird. I guess there's one way to test this idea.
<laughs> that looks ridiculous. Um, unfortunately, there are no longer versions of this part, but I guess we can do it something like that. If this is a lot more stable on the runway, then I think it's probably fair to say... No steering on this one, please. Uh, it's probably fair to say... That it's some kind of downward force that's making it... Uh, making it buckle like that. Smaller engines above the center of gravity or something? Center of gravity? You mean the center of mass? These are the only engines we have. Holy crap! What? What? You, you can't be serious. How can it be this asymmetrical? I disabled steering on that back wheel, by the way. Okay, enough of the safety ride. What if we just put these stupid things on both ends? to try and like line them up round about like that this looks so stupid also the engines are pretty close to the center of mass I think I remember now that, um, okay, why? Maybe it's even worse than I thought. I was about to say, I think I remember learning that these, uh, like that this wheel right here is not actually centered and that causes some serious problems, but maybe there's something asymmetrical about these ones as well. I don't play this, but could it be your tail fin is off? What do you mean, tail fin? It, it's centered, if that's what you mean. We can put it further back, but I don't know that that'll accomplish anything. Um... Uh, I'm pretty sure these wheels are in a bad spot, but let's see what happens anyway. Now it's like facing downward, although the wings are still tilted up slightly. More importantly, is it gonna... Is it maybe gonna stay straight this time? What was the difference when we were building this flat-winged thing and it wasn't doing this nonsense on the runway? Okay. Okay. And now it's wobbling like crazy. Look at it go. Why? You added fuel in the middle. You think the fuel needs to be further back. Which means the center of lift needs to be even further back. It's gonna hate that I shifted that. Uh, let's see. 
0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Okay, uh, we can give it a try. Did it just not acknowledge that I... It actually makes so little difference to where the center of mass is. Because this fuel tank is so close to the center. Maybe the front wheel needs to be further back. If I have a really long seesaw that I pick up... Oh, did I say seesaw? I meant wheelbarrow. My intuition is it would be less stable if the front wheel was further away. I guess we can try this. What would happen if you put the thrusters on the wings? I did that before. It puts a bunch of mass on the end of the wings and makes it uh, less stable in a different way. how far back that tail is now. It's probably not needed. Um, but I'm more concerned about the wheels at the moment. So far so good didn't start bumping or anything until I turned it right a little bit. Oh, and it launches itself off the runway and almost crashes if I didn't pull it up. Well, yeah, that's it. Or at least that's part of it. Uh, long wheelbarrow is bad wheelbarrow. As it turns out. Even though it's a bit counterintuitive to not have a wheel near the front. Alright. So, as slightly dangerous as it was, I'm pretty sure if I just set trim on the pitch before we take off, it should be perfectly safe. Um, we might have a craft now. Now, I want to see exactly how slow this thing can go. I think it was like 1.15ish. We've changed it slightly since then, but it should be about the same. I want to approach the runway as slowly as possible. Now for the real test, can you land it? It depends how bad these landing gear are. So, no. It really is hard to exaggerate how bad the early game landing gear are. There's a reverse difficulty curve building planes in this game. I mean, sure, later on you build space planes and that they're far more complex, but... Getting something that can actually land, despite these awful things, uh, is probably the hardest airplane thing in this game. Especially with firm aerospace. Alright, we're cruising at 108. Uh, we are losing speed as we do this, but we need to... I mean altitude, but we need to lose altitude anyway. So I don't think I do feel the need to activate engine at all. Uh, it seems to be much better than the last craft for the sake of 
stabilizing after we turn a little bit as we're trying to land. Let's drop some altitude. Unfortunately, you're going to gain a little bit of speed. It's not that much, though. This thing's a lot easier to control. At this speed. That's the whole point, after all. 111 meters per second. Can we slow down, though? I'm pretty sure the answer's no. 108. 107. We're now hovering at 22 meters. 100 meters per second. It's difficult to exaggerate how much easier this is, but I don't think we can do it uh, with the size of the runway that we've got. But yeah, um, we touched down and bounced off without exploding. So that's an improvement. 80 meters per second. And... I'm pretty sure this grass is just as safe as the runway. Except for the, uh, the hill that we're coming up to. Oh yeah, brakes. Brakes might be a good idea. Let's not hit them too hard. Let's hit them harder, because that's a hill. Um... 50 meters per second? 40... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Roll left. Yes. No. Yes. That is technically a landing. Okay. I think we just put brew shoots on this thing, and that's it. That's our aircraft. Oh yeah, slide backward at 5 meters per second, that, that seems safe. Eight meters per second. Still able to slow down. Where is the end of this hill? We did it. Actually, we're still accelerating. Friction in this universe is a little bit low. Just, just a little bit. We're now up to 10 meters per second. Just, just moonwalking back to the space center. I can't seem to steer it at all. Let's turn the reaction wheels on. There we go. Oh, careful. 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 Yes, just like this. Back to the runway. It is not slowing down. Okay, it is very slowly slowing down. Let's let's do physics time warp. What's the worst that could happen? Times three. Times four. We're maintaining ten meters per second still. Yes, this is our standard operating procedure for landing. Perfect. What do you mean planes don't normally bounce off the runway twice, spend three kilometers slowing down on grasslands, roll uphill, roll back, backward, and then 
finally end up back at the runway where they started. Do you doubt me? Sounds like every commercial flight of me. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, indeed. Um, speaking of which, I might actually crash into that. Break! Okay. Does this count as being on the runway? Can we recover vessel now? Give it some, give it some engine. There we go, recover vessel. Perfection. Uh, parts. Yeah, that was a hundred percent. Nice. You might need a third engine for reverse. I'm gonna put three shoots on it. Um. Perfection. Well, I'm not going to mess with that now that it works, even if I don't like where the, the tail is. Can I save as? How do I... Oh, here we go. The dodo. Beautiful. Let's do some contracts. What do we got? Active 2, max 7. Oh, I remember this. Oh, no. Return to Coven from a flyby of the moon. We can probably do that. Do we have our orbiter still? Uh, let's see. Is this it? How much delta V does this have? Light, bait shots, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, didn't we have something showing us like total delta V somewhere? What is this thing? Fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank. Oh, this is unfinished. Oh, this was like some weird thing that we were doing for arbitrary, uh, arbitrary contracts. That is just a back. Nope, I don't think we have our orbiter. Nope. No, indeed. Okay. Uh, let's look at the contracts first. Orbiting the moon, ironically, might be one of the easier ones right now. We just need lots of delta V. And to bring a Kerbal back safely. They don't have to land. Fly by the moon, return to Kerbin from a flyby of the moon. Easy as pie, no risk at all, now sign this waiver. Yes. Science data from space around Kerbin. That's mm -hmm. going to happen anyway. Oh yeah, we need some kind of science or something, I can't remember where it is, to enable spacewalks, right? Is it in the tracking station? No. Oh, we right click, I remember. So loop around the moon and come back, yes. Is this it? 
Tracking station upgrade. We've only got 93,000. Can't afford these. Can't afford much of anything right now. Oh, here we go. 75 grand and Kerbals can perform EVAs. Because if I can perform an EVA, I can do like a crew report from space around Kerbin, and then have the cr the Kerbal like pick it up and then store it back inside, and they can do another crew report later. Um. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did I already take that mission? Space around Kerbin. I guess it doesn't have to be any particular height. Oh, we get advanced money as well. Cool, cool. What else should we trigger? Tourists, 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 tourists. Oh, God. Oh, no. Pull a swivel, swivel liquid rocket. Uh, liquid fuel engine into an escape trajectory. No. No Kessler syndrome. Well, it, it wouldn't be a Kessler syndrome, but still. No space garbage. No arbitrary space garbage, anyway. That would take a lot of Delta V, anyway, wouldn't it? How much Delta V does it take to get an escape trajectory out of carbon orbit? We have a calculator somewhere, right? Astrogator? Minmus is like 4,300 meters per second. So probably only a little bit more than that. 4,500 should be more than enough. But I'd rather bring it back, which means a bit more. Yeah, I don't really want to do this one. Test decoupler on an escape trajectory out of carbon. Same nonsense. Uh, radial decoupler orbiting carbon. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. And then... What do we got for tourists? Suborbital spaceflight. That's not hard. And also suborbital spaceflight. So we can basically get paid for the same design twice. Suborbital spaceflight. Suborbital spaceflight. And well, that's not so, so difficult. Um, we've now got 115 grand. Are objects from previous missions persistent? Yeah, although you can just tell the game to delete stuff that's just debris. Um, like if there's no control parts attached or anything. Alright, so we need... Oof, owie. I don't even have anything that can take more than one... More than a command pod. I could control it with the... Uh, stay put, Nick. Alternatively, I could write a KOS script to bring them back safely. That removes my human error from the equation as well. Where's the heat shields? That'll probably work. So in theory, Kepler syndrome is actually possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the tourists don't count as, like, a Kerbal that you can give commands to. Actually... I don't know if this will work or not, but we can try it. I'm gonna decouple. That's a... that's a reaction wheel. Uh... Coupling. 
E12 decoupler. And then we need to test this thing in orbit as well. But I don't want to make it part of this design, I don't think. Procedural stack decoupler. This decoupler can be stretched to accommodate a range of sizes as potential upgrades. Uh, okay. Diameter? Nicer? Impulse? What is impulse? Oh, how violently it decouples. Force percent? Sides? That's just graphics. Hmm, neat. Not overly concerned about those for the moment. Crew is going to be... First... Uh, that's not how that works. I should make sure it's one of the contracts that... Uh, it only needs one herbal. And then we need the bare minimum to get a suborbital spaceflight with re-entry that is not going to kill. Not going to kill our Kerbos. Um, theoretically, we should be able to pull it off with just a BACC. Solid rocket boosters are very cheap for what they do. That's right, we're going to space on a... We're sending tourists to space on a budget. Cutting every corner. Capitalism ho. Let's give it some winglets. These are actually quite cheap. Tail fins are very cheap and give extremely good control authority. These are incredibly sensitive, but... We're going to have the computer drive it. And that should be maybe all it takes. Now I need to do some... Uh, who is peeing me? Uh, now I do need to do some programming. Let's see. I haven't done this in forever. We're going to launch, we're going to decouple, and we're going to arm the parachute. That's pretty much all there is to this one. Let's bring up the old notepad. Fantastic. And does it have like transparency and stuff? Not really. Okay. Uh we've got a sample program here. I don't remember all the commands though. Lock throttle to one, we don't need that. Let's make a new one. Uh, tourist... What am I going to save this as? Touristtrap.ks Okay, and we're going to start with... Let's, let's clear the screen. I think we can... We can oh, yuck, what the hell? Wait, how did I get the colors for this one? Language? Action script? Is that going to do it? That, that That's good enough. Okay. I can't remember if CLS works. Well, let's play around with the console. Can we do it from here? Uh, I don't think so. Let's just jump to the launch pad. Uh, what am I calling this again? Tourist trap. 
<laughs> Alright, save that. Go to launch pad. It won't be controllable. We'll see about that. Can we talk to the terminal? Don't forget the parachutes for landing, indeed. Uh, let's see, KOS, terminal, here we are. So there's no, there's no AI or Kerbal. Why can't I move the camera around now? There we go. There's no AI or Kerbal in this, uh, in this craft. So normally I couldn't stage, for example. Nice. Alright. Yeah, I saw Notepad++ was on top. Alright, so we're gonna go with... Does CLS clear the screen? It does not. I think I can, like, make an alias for it. That's probably why I remember... Um, CLS doing that. Okay, so we're gonna start with clear screen. Um, I might move the notepad around so we can see both. Oh, we can see both. Okay. I want to make it, like, transparent or something, though. Is that not an option? I think I was looking for that before. I'll just move it a bit this time. So we can see the craft as well. How's that? Not too small, I hope. I could zoom in over here. You can program in this game? You can indeed. Alright, uh, where's our command list for KOS? List of all commands. And also let's steal from the the demo. Lock throttle to 1.0, not gonna need that this time. Print, we can do that. Uh print print counting down. It's gonna give us a loop. From local count local variable. Local countdown is 10 until countdown equals 0. Step. Set countdown to countdown minus 1. Do print. Okay. Pretty unusual uh, syntax, but we can work with it. There's probably some other ways to do loops. Until ship max thrust greater than zero, wait half a second. So as soon as we have no ability to th thrust, we're going to stage. Wait until blah blah blah. Okay. I want to make the ship point a certain direction. And I don't remember how. Set target vector or something like that. Self-explaining commands. Break, clear screen, reboot, shut down, stage. We've got some math functions. Uh, what is this set of commands? I have no idea. Oh, as in, set of commands goes within squiggly brackets. If commands run, wait, until, wait until, when, on, on X do something. Uh, manipulating booleans, no. Where, where are the ship commands? They're pretty straightforward. Let's 
system variables, execution flow control? No, that's what we were just looking at. Uh, it might be variables. Yeah, 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 system variables. Lockable variables, steering, throttle, wheel steering, wheel throttle. Uh, what? Where did steering go? Expand. Only to be used with lock and unlock, not with set. They don't have the desired effect with set. That's all it says. Well, that's not very informative. What are the uh, arguments for it? Set steering to something. I think I remember something like bracket 90 comma zero, for example. Unexpected comma. Set steering to what? Can I say help steering? Nope. Unexpected token, comma, found, expected, bracket, close. Set steering to zero? No. There must be better documentation than the wiki's list of commands. Wherefore art thou? AOS manual. Here we go. There's also some tutorials and stuff. Language. Flow control variables. Uh... Probably going to end up being quicker to steal from the tutorials. Where do I find how to set the steering? This should be easy for the men who made an LTN for spaceships in Factorio SE. That assumes things like it doesn't take two hours to find out a, the answer to a simple question in the documentation. Uh, I literally just want to know how I used to set... Maybe I've still got those files lying around somewhere. I have no idea where, though. I want to set steering to something because I want that... I, I want the target to be dynamic to be controlled with math. So we can do something like a gravity turn. But in this case, it'll be a bit different. Here we go. Set steering to R bracket 0, 0, negative 90. What the heck is R? Heading 90, comma 90. Okay, cool. We've got something static to work with. Uh, set steering to heading. Bracket. I think it's heading would be 90 and then 45 degrees. No. Interpreter not allowed to set a name that will clobber or hide. What? The system lock... Co oh, it's it's lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock, steering, to heading. 90, 45? Okay, so that works. So then if we stage it, the AI, or the, the program, should be trying to aim exactly here. Constantly.
45 degrees is maybe a bit too shallow, but this is a good example. So we're going east, and we're going up at 45 degrees is the idea. Oh, and it seems like the lock steering... Yeah, it, it, it more and more slowly... As it's approaching its target vector, the, the steering gets slower. But that is quite neat. What's our apoapsis? Oh, I didn't put Kerbal Engineer on this thing. Unfortunately, I was a bit short of time, but I wanted to check. There's probably a setting somewhere for Kerbal Engineer where we can just have it included in every craft by default so we don't have to add a part for it. Um, but let's see. Does that look suborbital to you? It actually might be. It's probably a bit short. Like maybe 50, 60,000. We'll soon find out. We're already at 40,000. No, that might be it. It might be that easy. Forty-six. Well, I don't think physics warp is going to be a problem here. It's certainly not going to alter the outcome by that much. 65, 66, and we're in space, technically. That's actually perfect. I couldn't have designed it better. Okay. So, let's revert. So this is what our program's going to look like. Oh, I didn't mean to revert to the vehicle bay. Uh, get out of here. We're going to lock steering. Uh, heading ninety comma forty-five, and we're going to stage. Not the line. And then we're going to wait. Oh, let me do some all caps for the commands, I guess. Uh, wait until... Wait until vertical velocity is negative. How do I check that again? Colon altitude, ship colon velocity, ship colon. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Variables. Wherefore aren't the variables? Expressions. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Built-in special variable names. Perfect. Full list of reserved variable names. Here we go. Ship. Target. Type vessel. Ship is of type vessel. Vessel has a lot of stuff. Every suffix of orbitable. Control, braking, oh sorry, bearing, heading, thrust, max thrust, max thrust stat, available thrust, available, facing, bounds, mass, wet mass, dry mass, dynamic pressure. Oh, we could use that. As soon as dynamic pressure equals zero, stage. Vertical speed is what I was looking for. Okay, vertical speed. Wait until vertical speed is less than zero. Uh, I'm not sure about the syntax here. Stage. No stage dot align. Uh, and then... 
probably I can just stage again. Or I could combine these two stages, because I'm pretty sure if we arm the parachute while we're in space, it's not going to open until the time is right. Uh, until the altitude is below 1000 and minimum pressure is below... Uh, it, it, it's not going to partly open until this minimum pressure, and it's not going to actually open until altitude. So that could actually be our entire program right there. Uh, let me just move this again a little bit. So you can see the staging. So we're just going to stage uh, stage this. Lock to a heading. Uh, stage this and we're done. Except we need to unlock steering. Unlock steering. Because we want the, uh, we don't want the program trying to force the command pod to face this direction. We want to let it do its aerodynamic thing. It's only rocket science? How hard could it be, right? Alright, I think that's it. Assuming the syntax is correct, which it's probably not. Wait until... Uh, where is it? Commands. No, float. Looking for float, right? Why did this go all grey? Oh, it doesn't like the dark mode. Yuck. Uh, generic structure? No. General... Let's just steal it from the tutorial. Actually, it should be in this file. Wait until... Wait until... Oh, yeah, that's... There's no brackets or anything needed. Wait until ship... Pull an altitude greater than some number. I'm gonna use wait until vertical speed. Which I think I forgot the ship colon earlier. Uh, wait until ship vertical speed less than zero. Then stage and unlock steering and we're done ski, I think. All right. And I can actually set it up to be like the default program for this craft, but I'm not going to bother with that just yet. Now let's look at our contracts. Um... Dudbert, Raloc, Tamdlin, and Angelo. It's actually everyone except for Julfred, who's in a pair. Let's find Julfred. Julfred Kerman gets to be lucky first. And safety third. What about waiting until fuel spent to dump the engine? We're going to dump the engine at the peak, and it's going to be spent by then. This, this game turns you into a rocket scientist. Plus 100 IQ. Tumbling can confirm. Alright, let's give this a go. Launch anyway. Yes. Yeah, we did put our tourist in there. It won't be controllable under normal circumstances. Uh, and I don't think we need Ferrum to tell us what's up this time. Okay. AOS. Um, how do I... How do I load this program again? I could just, like, type it out, but... How about no? Creating reusable GUI elements. Huh. Execute node script. No. Uh, 
Wasn't there a demonstration of how to do the files? somewhere. Quick start. Here we go. I don't like the idea that the program is stored only on this vessel. Alright, switch to zero. It's like... There's, there's like a imaginary storage archive here. Switch to zero. And this one is like universal. Uh... And then we can edit Tourist Trap. We should be able to see it, I think. What? Unexpected EOF found. What do you mean? Can I just print it out so we can see if it's there? Volumes, file control, list files, here we go. List files. Okay. Touristtrap.ks is here. Still wants the line terminator. Do I just add this here? Edit touristtrap.ks. No? Unexpected token EOF found. Oh, do you mean you want the dot here? Come on. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Alright, so there's our program. Exit. Uh, can I type just run? Yes, I can. All right, I have no control over any of this from this point on. Lock steering to heading 90, as in east, 45 degrees up. Stage, that's how, that's when we took off. Wait until ship vertical speed is less than zero. Stage again and unlock steering. And that's all there is to it. A line terminator? I'll be tumbling. Back in a sec. So, if I remember correctly, we can lock steering to a bunch of brackets with math in them, like ship, uh, ship altitude divided by something, and we could have a variable for, like, maximum height, the, the altitude that we want to be at for our orbit. Yeah, if I remember right, you can cram a bunch of math in there. And it'll adjust its uh, targeted vector every, uh, every tick. 
You could lock steering to retrograde for descent. There's no need. In fact, it's not a good idea. Oh, to retrograde? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But the aerodynamics will do that for us in any case. And there's our stage. Did I not switch off far? Did it, like, reactivate? Um, and I think the program's done. I'll add some text to it so that we can actually follow what it's doing next time. So as you can see, the parachute's already been activated. You can see that blue over there. It's already armed. It's just waiting for atmospheric pressure and for altitude to open up properly. And hopefully the... Uh, the script control system, this chunker here, is going to be problematic with the heat of re-entry. Descent? You mean bring Kerbals back? Yes. We don't get paid otherwise. It wouldn't do not to bring up tourists back. It would look unprofessional. We'd lose standing with the Mercenary Review Board. Well, yes, these are tourists. Check doesn't clear if they don't come back. Look at him, he's so happy. That's actually a her, but yes. Wouldn't, wouldn't you be? Seeing the booster fall back behind? There's actually not a whole lot to see from here. Oh, except for the water. And there goes the booster again. And there's the sky. Now we're seeing something. Upside down, upside down. And the aerodynamics are self-correcting here. I kind of want to learn aerodynamics as a hobby, but... I don't imagine that information comes free. Because it makes no sense to me that these things... You're joking. What? What did... Uh... I guess I needed to, um... I, I guess I needed to set this a bit stricter. Atmospheric... Minimum atmospheric pressure, we're gonna say, like... I was going to say almost one atmosphere, but this is as high as I can set it. I think it'll probably be slow enough to be safe by the time it's at half an atmosphere. Probably. When you said you brought them back, you didn't say in how many pieces. <laughs> Oi. That, that, that's enough out of you. Let's add some, like, print screens. Oh, prints, so that we can see what's going on here. Uh, clear screen, print... Uh, blocking, steering to east, 45 degrees. Um, print, launch, print, uh, deep. Coupling and army parachute. Print. Good luck. Perfect. All right, this will bring him back safely. It's fine. Did we put a tourist in? There we go. Line terminators? Uh, you mean this? After the quotes. Oh, the dots over here. Right, right, right. Correct. 
This one's already here. Fantastic. All right, bring up the terminal. Uh, what was it called again? Something zero. Volume zero? No, I don't think that's right. I think it was a shorter, a shorter word. Switch to zero. It's just that. What are these things called again? Like archives or something? Anyway, switch to zero. Can I like just tell it to list files? Print uh, tourist trap .ks. No, that's not what I meant. I think that was a command that it'll just spit out what's in that file, but um, it's fine. We'll just run it this time. Here we go. Switch to zero. Oh yeah, zero is referring to the archive. Yeah. Yeah, zero is the archive that's like unlimited storage and it's found like on your hard drive. The other archives are like local to the craft, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Do you think this will work with physics time warp? Let's try it. It should. I would be a little bit surprised if the parachute works with the physics time warp. Let's find out. We'll still get to space, right? Yeah, we will. Not sure if the physics time warp would give us more or less drag. And as soon as we start falling... Decoupling and arming parachute. Good luck. So this thing is set to... Not try to open at all until 50%... Uh, atmospheric pressure. That should prevent it from wrecking itself. Alternatively, I could add some stuff to the program where we actually wait until it's safe. Who are you calling more or less of a drag here, mate? I see what you did there. Local storage is actually stored within that instance of the ship, so it legit disappears. Oh, are we good? And do parachutes get wrecked by physics time warp? Not anymore. And what about... Hey, there we go. We can physics time warp our whole way through these missions. Nice. Recover vessel. Now we're going to have to do two launches for each... Hmm. How much science have we got? Not enough. Yeah, literally the only crew part that I have for this is the command pod. So unless I'm going to try and cram two of these in a, in sequence like that, um, I don't think that's going to work so well. Let's grab another one of our tourists. And you could also use this to give, like, a little bit of XP to newbie, uh, newbie space center kerbins, uh, kerbals. All right, launch. Yes, we know. That seemed close. Well, I did set it to, like, 500, um, for the parachute to open. All right, uh, what are we doing? Vault. 
set what to zero again? Switch to zero. It's very implicit. Run tourist trap dot chaos. While that's running, I'm going to have a look at how to set it to run automatically um, for a craft. Or I'm going to try anyway. Hark, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. This tutorial is designed to work with a very specific rocket design. Make the start of the script. Hello launch. Make the script actually do something. I don't think this is the one I'm looking for. There's a way to automatically run a script with a certain craft, I think. So you could literally just press the button and the whole thing would get done. Oh yeah, we can include um, time warp in this thing. Let's do that. Where do we find it? Um, commands? Perhaps? Is there like a master list I can just control F on? Warp. Here we go, warp and warp mode. Time warp can be controlled with the variables warp and warp mode. C warp. Time warp structure suffixes backward compatible time warping. Uh, okay. Time warp allows you to control and query the KSP's game's time warp abilities. Rate list? Returns either rail rate list or physical rate list, depending on which matches the current mod. Uh, I'm guessing it returns, like, which ones you could set it to at the moment. Maybe? List of scalar values. Mode. Warp rate. Warp 2. Warp 2. Call to warp forward to a known timestamp. Hmm. Uh, rate, the current multiplier, get slash set. Okay, that might be all it takes. So time warp colon rate, I think that's it. Let's go with... Uh, set time warp colon rate. Is it two or is it equals? It's probably two. Scalar, that's just an integer, right? Or it can have a decimal. Two, four. Set time warp rate to one. Wait until ship altitude less than 500. See what that, see how that goes. Now, can I do it from here? What was the syntax? Set time warp colon rate. Two, two? No. Unverified variable name. There's an alternate run command as well. Run bracket. 
0 colon script.ks. That might be handy. Warp 2 times seconds. Yeah, that's not quite what I want. Um... What did I just try? Set time warp colon rate. Am I using set wrong? Let me check some other syntax here. We've probably got a set somewhere. Yeah, set countdown two, countdown minus one. So it should be the two. Maybe we have to use lock with this. Oh, time walks, time warp suffix of K universe. Okay, Is, do I have to say? Well, let me click on K universe first. K universe a special structure that allows you to blah blah blah. Serves as a place to access objects directly connected to KSP games itself. Okay, so it's not implicit, it looks like. A universe, colon, time warp, colon, rate, two. Hey, but it says time warp one. What? How about three? Cannot warp faster than one times while in atmosphere. It's probably trying to do on rails time warp. Set warp mode to... okay. Set warp mode. Where is warp mode? There is no warp mode. What do you mean? Warp to cancel warp rate warp time warp index integer index values go zero one two three. Time warp mode values are physics, or... That's mode. Uh... Is settled. True once an actual rate finally arrives at the... Splish splash. Recover. Recover, I say. Recover. Oh my god. Okay. Um, can I do a console from here? Not that I can tell. What's this? All input locks cleared. What even was that? We may never know. Okay. I'm just gonna start this thing so we can play around with the console. One more tourist. Watch. Set warp mode. Three. Warp mode three is not valid. Is it K universe, etc. Warp mode? Uh, what was the other colon thingy? Time warp? Is it under the time warp structure or no? Warp mode two. So warp mode to physics. Set warp three. Does it work if I just do this from here? Warp mode to physics. Okay. That might be a different variable that I just created. Set warp 3. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing set k universe time warp, was it? Time warp. Uh, warp mode to physics. No, it's just called mode. Time warp mode. 
I'll use a physics or rail. Time warp mode to physics and set K universe time warp. Uh, where is it? Rate? Warp. Zero one two three to zero. Time warp one. One. Time warp two. Two. I mean, what? Two. Time warp three. Three. Time warp four. Fantastic. Okay. So these are these are the two commands we need. Uh, set universe time warp mode to physics. Don't know if capitals matter at all. Set universe time warp. Which what was it again? Uh, warp to four to three. And then set it back to zero. Put it back here. That should be valid. Let's try it. Without the... Without the time that we just lost. Warp is apparently a global. Indeed. Okay. Uh, switch to zero. Actually, let me try this. Now, let me reinforce switch to zero so I remember that for now. List run roostcraft.ks. Uh, why is time warp one? And why has program ended? What? Wait, what? No. No, that won't do. Wait until ship vertical speed is less than zero. Apparently it thought... I bet it was because of physics time warp. Somehow. It thought that ship vertical speed was less than zero on the launch pad. Let's just say wait 30 or something. At least 30 seconds before it's going to take action. Whoops. Okay. Switch to zero. List run. Uh, tourist trap. Chaos. What's the problem now? Oh, it wants to dot after this. There we go. Pium. And we're already at fifty K. Oh, it actually goes to like 80,000. Just barely. And down we go. Relic looks very pleased to place her life in the hands of a hastily written program. Because there's now 30 seconds of vertical thrust, uh, thrust. 
Yeah, no, um, what I think happened last time is because of physics warp being a bit weird, the program checked for negative vertical speed while it was still on the launch pad, like the nanosecond after it staged, and found negative vertical speed. And time warp one. There it is. I don't really see the need to, um, well, how about this? Wait until ship altitude is less than 50. Time warp zero. But we could, of course, if, if we still had the old problem of parachutes failing with physics time warp, we could get around it that way. Again, more height now because you have that moment of vertical thrust. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, so when we lock steering, um, that reacts all the time, uh, even if we tell it to wait. So we lock steering to heading 90, 45. Uh, even if we put some kind of math here or something, something dynamic, and we then tell the program to wait, it'll still keep doing this stuff in real time. That's why. Um, but yeah. Let's knock off the rest of these uh, easy tourist jobs with suborbital flights. I should probably go get some more science so that I could build the version of this where they have multiple... Um, where we can put multiple Kerbals in, in one go. But for now this is fine. Let's just get them out of the way. Get some money. Open up some other contracts that we could do more, the, more to the point. Ta Tati Kerman? Off you go. Interesting. Looked like it waited a moment longer to start its turn. Well, it would have been 30 seconds, I think. I'm pretty sure it's... I'll just double check the wait command. I'm pretty sure it's in seconds. Language... Uh... Command? Commands. Here we go. Wait. Where would I find wait? Oh, there's a search thing. Wait. Flow control. Here we go. Halts execution for a specified amount of time. Note that running a wait until statement can hang the machine forever. Blah blah blah. It's six. It, yeah, it's seconds. You could do fractions of a second as well, but it is in seconds. So you'll probably notice. Switch to zero. List. Run. Forest. Trap.ks. You'll probably notice that the ship starts turning in less than 30 seconds. AOS is getting fewer updates at warp, so it might not react as fast. Yeah, but the thing that it did um, before it was supposed to was ship vertical speed is less than zero. It thought this was true on uh, on the launch pad a moment after we launched, because of physics warp, I think. Um, that's why I put the wait condition in. Basically to get around a bug, because physics warp is weird. This is honestly just the thing for career mode. <laughs> 
It's like Factorio. You build a system to do something over and over for you. Hmm, come to think of it, I could uh, actually have put the scriptable control system on the other side of the decoupler, which means we'd get less stuff back, but like, if if we were more concerned that this was more dangerous for re-entry, um, that's a thing that we could do, because I'm pretty sure we could set up the conditions uh, at that moment of decoupling in orbit, like that can be the last thing that the program does. Despite the issues getting things debugged, it's very nice to be able to just say, put this in orbit, exactly. Especially when you end up with, uh, lots and lots of put this satellite in this orbit missions. Or just to get a, a very, very, very clean, repeatable um, circular orbit at low orbit around Kerbin, uh, Kerbal. No, Kerbin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to get, like, the perfect circular orbit over and over again to start your missions from. Very, very nice as well. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You wouldn't be able to control the time warp ending if the KOS module was detached. Yeah, I know. We'd have to, like, trigger it sooner or just let it stay at 4 by or something. Alright, so what was that other syntax? Um, run quote zero colon slash is trap.ks question mark there we go good how about you not too bad thanks sergeant dog good to see you again welcome welcome hope you're doing well uh no name and base today but um i can hold on to it if you want uh i think this is our second last tourist for the moment Can name the capsule after him. Uh, KOS name tag. I, th I don't think I can change it now, but yes. Let's see the view from inside. Nice. Yeah, this seems safe. Just watching that dial get closer and closer to zero as you're upside down. And that's a reassuring sound, at least. Fantastic. Um, recover. And I think we've got one left. Oh, the tourists get XP as well. Do we have any more missions for VIPs for suborbital? This one's orbital. I'll definitely take it, but we'll have to maybe write another program for that.
Grade 2 tourists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Orbit around Kerbin. Orbit around Kerbin. God damn it. I guess we're done spamming suborbital for the moment. Well, there's like one more to go, I think. KSB2 was a letdown for me. I do realize it's early access, but they had three plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I prepared myself for disappointment for that one. Hopefully it will end up being good. All right, Angelo Kerman, last tourist to get launched. I can't believe how neatly um, just aiming this thing at 45 degrees turned out to work out. Switch to zero list trap. Tourist trap dot KS. Oh hey, and it's daytime now. That's nice. So long, Space Center. 15 FPS when I launch and look down at the planet? Yeah. Yeah. And you're seeing just a whole lot of nothing as well. And the thing is, I mean, you know, I don't have the most amazing graphics card, but it's good enough that that's not where the bottleneck is, you know? Um, I think it's, I think my RAM speed is by far the worst thing in the system. Factorio showed me just how important that can be, and everything else in this thing is fairly decent, but the maximum RAM speed I can get uh, is relatively, relatively low. Um, I still think it's absolutely insane just how poorly optimized things are these days, but it's code on top of code on top of code on top of code, and people are lazy. What can you expect? So I might give it another two years to mature, indeed. I'm sure my CPU is my bottleneck. In all fairness, optimization is one of the last phases. Oh yeah, but I was thinking as well of, like, a couple of games, actually. Um, MechWarrior 5 Mercs and Battletech, as in the turn-based one. They both run well except for horrendous hitches. And you can kind of tell from when they happen that there's absolutely no need for that to be the case. I have a 1080 Ti and 3000 MHz RAM. I think mine's like... High 2000s, I can't remember exactly how fast it can go, but it's the mother, the motherboard can't go that high with the, um, with the RAM is the problem. All right, that's the last of our tourists for now. Let's make a tourist orbiter. We've got one person, we've got two people, or orbit around Urban. Test Rove Max Model S2 splashed down. That's going to be nice and easy. We've got three slots available right now. Let's grab that and the two tourists. Uh -huh. I guess we could do that Rove Max thing first. Oh, random music. Okay. Um. What are we launching again? I think it's a wheel that we temporarily have access to. Rovemax Model S2, I believe that was it. So we just need to send this thing to... I think a flea should probably be enough. And I don't think we need to write a program for this one. Uh, even though it's Ferrum Aerospace, 
I think the reaction wheels are still kind of OP. We should be able to get this thing into the water. I, I hope. I could give it a couple more parachutes just to be safe. Pilot Tim Kerman at Jam, indeed. How do you get more science? You go to different biomes and do different experiments. Uh, if we want to hoover up a bunch of science, there's actually like several biomes in the Kerbal Space Center, but it's a little bit tedious. Alright, thrust doesn't actually matter because it's a solid rocket booster. Let's see if this works. It seems like it's going to be okay. Oh, crap. Uh, it's going to run out pretty quick. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Are we going to make it to the water? I think so. Yeah, we're good. It's fine. Easy peasy. Oh. I probably should have set this to open a bit later. Let's, uh, physics warp. Do we get some kind of science bonus or something for visiting the monolith? Crew report. Oh, flying over Kerbin's shores. We don't have that apparently. Well, that's 3.5 science. That's something. Is it just me, or does that look like a Star Wars <laughs> droid? It actually does. I put them down here because I wanted the aerodynamics to be such that it would want to point this way. Put some drag at the back. Alright, no more physics warp. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, test? Run test. Did we get it? I think we got it. Very VIP. Very tour tourists. Very VIP. How many of these did we do? Oh, it's multiple things for one contract. Uh, did we get this one done? I think we did. Yeah. Why isn't the notification there? Well, I hope that's that. Should be. We should have another contract space. Yeah, we do. Test Weasley turbofan engine in flight over Kerbin. We could use this to have access to a better jet engine until we finish this. Focus temperature survey above 1700 meters. Uh, the Weasley might be good enough to get us up there. I'll put that off for the moment. New engine for the dodo, indeed. Alright, uh, so next time... Next time we're going to write an orbiter script. We're going to make a nice, simple craft that can get into orbit and then just come back down safely. Actually, let me have a look real quick. How close am I to getting a command pod that can, or, or something that can fit more than one Kerbal? Uh, space exploration? Hitchhiker storage container. I need a 
thick rocket for that, but that might be the way to go as well. That can fit four people. We need, like, 74 science for that. We need 74 science for any of these. What's up here? Advanced rocketry. Uh, what the heck is that? RFP1 flag. A flag that can be applied to size 1 tanks. Amazing. Um, well, I don't know where... Here it is, command modules. Capola, Mark 3, 1 3 command pod, Mark 2 lander can, service bay. Okay, so we need this anyway, but we could probably... If we can find some science, we can unlock a big fat container full of kerbals so that we don't have to do with them, uh, send them up one at a time. I'd also like it if we could just have... Do we not have this already? What are we doing? Where's the... Where's the, like, lander? Oh, is this it? No, that's the Mark II. I want the Mark I lander can. Oh, here it is. Why is it so bright? The Mark I lander can. This is inline. We can put a Kerbal in it. So then we can just have a skinny rocket with uh, two or three or four Kerbals in it. That would be perfect. I need some science. Maybe I'll do some collecting of the science around the Kerbal Space Center off screen. So that we can grab this. Um, and then we're going to do an orbiter craft to send tourists into orbit and then back down again. Preferably have them land back at this Kerbal Space Center. It might even be possible um, to make that happen fully automatically. I mean, I'm sure it is, but I'm not entirely sure how it would go about deciding when to de-orbit them procedurally. We could just put an arbitrary timer on it, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that'll be for next week. If I get time, I'll, I'll do my homework to save some time actually writing the program. But I will explain every step of the way, regardless. Um, but that's going to be it for now. Let's see who is streaming Kerbal Descent 20 Space Descent 20 Program. Discount Engineer? Why not? Because he came in and gave me crap when I was struggling with my planes. Nah, no, I'm kidding. It's fine. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints Factorio if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. Uh, as I continue this series, I will put uh, all the programs and stuff on the Discord as well. I guess I should save, like spacecrafts as well although i will try and make generic like the stuff that'll work with practically any craft as much as i can um but yeah for now take care see you next time stay safe